Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. People are sailing. The crew are all conceptual gods. Chapter 41. Sea Area of West Rob Village. Hina looked at the members of the Black Cat Pirates trapped in the cage, not knowing whether to be happy or depressed. One thing she was sure of was that she and Mamasugi Vice Admiral were deceived by the traveler Sha Yu. After catching the Black Cat Pirates in one fell swoop, she immediately interrogated Captain Kuro. What she didn't expect was that when the members of the Black Cat Pirates heard that she came to capture the Red Rabbit, they immediately lost control of their emotions and cursed each other more dirty than the other. Colonel Hina, we really have nothing to do with that Red Rabbit. As soon as Hina finished the call, a crew member who was tied up immediately begged, to be honest, we hate this Red Rabbit more than you. If it weren't for it, we wouldn't have been caught by you. Major, give me a chance. Sam, a combat member of the Black Cat Pirates, with green hair, said seriously, as long as you let us go, we are willing to make amends and follow you to catch the Red Rabbit. Looking at the pirates who were more excited than herself, Hina inexplicably wanted to laugh. Of course, it was impossible to laugh. She was an iceberg beauty known for her coldness at the naval headquarters. How could she not laugh because of the grief and anger of these lawless pirates? At this moment, a warship suddenly entered the sea. The speed of the warship was very fast. After a while, the two warships were less than a hundred feet apart. On the deck of the warship that was approaching Heine's warship quickly, there stood a mighty middle-aged man with two cigars in his mouth. If he was not wearing a marine colonel's coat, he would definitely be mistaken for a sea slicker. The man with two cigars in his mouth was none other than the naval headquarters colonel, who had just taken office as the highest officer of Logue Town this year, the former problem child of the headquarters, and the king of consecutive defeats in the original anime, Smoker. Next to Smoker, there stood quietly a tall girl with glasses and a nearly perfect waist-to-hip ratio. The girl had a long sword on her waist, and her expression was a little silly. Tashigi, the adjutant next to Smoker, the highest officer of Logue Town, was a four-eyed girl who was obviously soft and cute but loved to collect famous swords. On the deck behind the two of them, dozens of pirates tied up were densely packed. The leader was none other than Alvida, the captain of the Alvida pirates. Soon, the two warships came close together. Hina, what are you doing? As soon as he came over, Smoker saw the pirates on Hina's warship who were also tied up. He didn't expect Hina to have a big harvest this time. Smoker simply jumped in front of Hina, without taking the cigar out of his mouth, and said incoherently, you have a great harvest. Hina didn't say anything, but stared at the pirates on Smoker's warship, and her expression gradually became wonderful, Smoker, don't tell me that you were also deceived by a traveler to catch pirates. Traveler. Smoker blinked and said blankly, what traveler? Seeing Smoker's reaction, seeing that he didn't know the existence of the traveler Sha Yu, he simply changed the subject and asked, are there no news about the Red Rabbit on other warships now? Before Smoker could speak, a member of the Black Cat Pirates suddenly raised his voice and said out of control, Major Hina, please make it clear. What do you mean by being deceived by a traveler? After this, the usually calm Chloe also turned his head with difficulty to look at Hina. Before, he had always believed that Hina appeared in Xiluobu village to catch the red rabbit that killed celestial dragons, and thus accidentally discovered their traces. Now it seems that this is obviously not the case, but some traveler tricked Hina to Xiluobu village. For a moment, he almost split on the spot. He was the captain of the Black Cat Pirates, with a bounty of 16 million baileys, and Captain Crow, who was given a hundred nicknames by the people in the world, but he was defeated by a traveler. What made him most crazy was that he didn't even know who this traveler was or what he looked like. Smoker ignored the reaction of the members of the Black Cat Pirates. He just walked to Hina and sat down carelessly, saying unhappily, don't mention it. Since entering East Blue, we haven't found the Red Rabbit, but we have caught a lot of pirates. I just talked to Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel. His situation is the same as ours. Vice Admiral Huo Shaoshan is the same. It is said that the captured pirates are almost full. We have no choice but to temporarily give up the search for the Red Rabbit and send the captured pirates to the nearest branch base. Hearing this, Hina held her forehead with one hand and said to herself, So, where did they escape to? Hina is very confused. I don't think we can find it for a while. 
Smoker exhaled a puff of smoke and said solemnly, I heard from Mr. Gorp that there is a dopey dog with the ability to teleport next to the red rabbit. In this way, as long as they deliberately hide and don't show up, it will be as difficult for us to find them as looking for a needle in the sea. After a slight pause, Smoker suddenly changed the subject, by the way, what happened to the traveler you just mentioned? Hina did not hide it and simply told the story of meeting Sha Yu. After listening to Hina's story, Smoker had no time to react, and the members of the Black Cat Pirates were the first to explode. Ah, it turned out to be this traveler. How could he have the heart to deceive such a beautiful major? Hey, hey, this is not a matter of deceiving the major. Traveler, don't let me meet him, otherwise I will cut him into pieces and throw him into the sea to feed the fish. A Chu. At the same time, by accident, a traveler who entered the waters of Shimotsuki village sneezed again. What? Sha Yu, who had just walked from the cabin to the deck, looked around and said in confusion, Why do you keep sneezing today? Could it be that Red Rabbit and Rupi have done something weird again? For a whole day, the pirates wandering in East Blue were all terrified. Some were lucky enough to avoid the warships that were looking for the Red Rabbit, but many unlucky ones ran into the oncoming warships before they could hide. Without exception, all the pirates encountered by Marine became prisoners. As more and more pirate groups were caught, whether it was the sea areas where pirates appeared all year round or the villages and towns that had been occupied by pirates, they all ushered in a rare peace because the Red Rabbit killed a celestial dragon. As a traveler, Sha Yu had no idea about this. After sneezing several times on the deck, he rubbed his sore nose and immediately looked up at the island opposite. Because it was dark at this time, Sha Yu did not recognize that the island in front of him was the Shimotsuki village that appeared in the original book. Little Green, guard the boat. Although he didn't know where this place was, Sha Yu was still attracted by the scenery that came into his sight. He threw the green rabbit on the boat and jumped off. After crossing a beach, a green rice field suddenly came into Sha Yu's sight. Although it was dark at this time, there were still people working in some fields. Seeing that there were people in the rice field, Sha Yu quickly quickened his pace and walked over. Just as he walked to a rice field, Sha Yu suddenly felt the void in front of him sway for a moment, and then returned to normal, as if it was just an illusion of his. Of course, Sha Yu would not think that the sway just now was an illusion, because he had the same feeling when Druby pulled the windmill village in front of him through the air before. The sway that just appeared was obviously Druby's use of the don't blame the uneven road if you can't do it method, accurately locating his current position, and now he may have opened champagne on the boat to celebrate the big fuss they made in East Blue. Sure enough, on the deck of the ship docked at the shore, Druby and Red Rabbit, who had disappeared for a whole day and half a night, seemed to appear out of thin air. One picked up the newspaper and read it with relish, and the other took out a canvas shoe and polished it. In front of the cabin door, the green rabbit blinked his big eyes and looked blankly at Drubby and Red Rabbit who suddenly appeared on the deck as if they had never left. His expression was a little horrified. Kirilenko. Suddenly, Drubby, who had finished reading the content of the newspaper, turned his head and looked at Red Rabbit who was polishing his shoes, we seem to have caused a big disaster for the master. Quote question mark quote. Red Rabbit raised his head and a big question mark appeared on his head. Look for yourself. Drubby threw the newspaper out, and the newspaper against the wind was magically not blown away by the wind, and fell steadily in front of Red Rabbit. Without waiting for Red Rabbit to look at the newspaper, Green Rabbit quickly came over. When he saw the content of the newspaper, his eyes widened again, and his expression became more horrified. At this moment, a bird suddenly chirped in the sky. Almost at the same time, Red Rabbit grabbed the fishing rod next to him and slammed it into the sky. Pa! With a muffled sound, the news bird that had just flown over the ship fell down and was caught by Red Rabbit, who skillfully took out all the leaflets on the news bird. Judging from the fluency of his movements, it should not be the first time he did this. After taking off the leaflets, Red Rabbit handed the news bird to Green Rabbit and said directly, Braise it. Green Rabbit nodded vigorously, took the news bird and went to prepare the seasoning. Druby came over and picked up one of the leaflets and looked at it curiously. When he saw the photo of Red Rabbit and the amount of the bounty on the bounty, his eyes suddenly lit up, Kirilenko, you are bountied. How much? 
Red Rabbit was too lazy to count the densely packed zeros on the bounty. 500 million Baileys. Druby's eyes became brighter and brighter. How many canvas shoes and diamonds can you buy? Red Rabbit was not surprised by the number of 500 million. Drubby did not answer, but turned and walked into the cabin. When he returned to Red Rabbit, he had a rope and a sack in his hand. What are you going to do? Red Rabbit blinked blankly. I'll tie you up and carry you to collect the reward. Drubby said seriously, wait until I collect the reward, then you can escape from prison. Then, I'll buy you a pair of canvas shoes. What? Red Rabbit's eyes widened instantly, we are brothers fighting side by side on the same ship, Drubby. We need shoes. Hi. Drubby raised his hand and clapped his hands with Red Rabbit, and pulled a bench to Red Rabbit and Dog Broke to tell him his plan. After listening to Drubby's plan, Red Rabbit's eyes also lit up. He always liked to break everything with force, and for the first time, his eyes flashed with wisdom, as if he saw 500 million Baileys waving to them. At this moment, Drubby suddenly changed the subject, we are making a lot of noise now. If those marines find out that we are on this ship, it will definitely implicate the master. So, let's go now, to a place called Shirsi Town, where there is a marine branch base. I have investigated clearly that there is a passionate marine named Monka there, and we can give this credit to him. Hearing this, Red Rabbit didn't care about eating the braised news bird, and immediately stood up and said impatiently, let's go. Hi. Drubby stopped talking nonsense and took out a lasso and threw it into the sky. The next second, a huge island appeared in front of them. It was Shirsi Town where the East Blue Marine 153 branch was located. Without any hesitation, Drubby and Red Rabbit jumped off the deck almost at the same time and landed steadily on the ground of Shirsi Town. When the two landed, the island where Shirsi Town was located disappeared strangely and silently, as if what had just appeared was just a mirage. Shimotsuki village hasn't been so lively for a long time. Because of the appearance of Sha Yu, a traveler, in just over 10 minutes, the children in Shimotsuki village came to hear the news and surrounded Sha Yu, who was invited to a warm villager's home. Half an hour later, Sha Yu got along well with the villagers, and laughter and joy came one after another. Mr. Sha Yu, Mr. Sha Yu, if you are a traveler, you must have been to many places and experienced many interesting things. Mr. Sha Yu, please tell us about your travel experiences. I want to know what kind of world is outside Shimotsuki village. Mr. Sha Yu, most of those who surrounded Sha Yu were children in Shimotsuki village. After hearing that Sha Yu was a traveler and had been to many places, these children and teenagers completely let go and rushed to make noises. In order to listen to Sha Yu's travel experiences, a child ran home to get the wine that his father had secretly hidden. It would have been fine if the child didn't take it. As he took the lead, other children also took it home. Some brought fruits, some brought cigarettes, and some even stole his father's private money, which made the parents who were watching on the side laugh. Surprisingly, no parents stopped their children's enthusiasm, and they were obviously looking forward to the travel experiences of Sha Yu, the traveler. Sha Yu is really good at making up travel experiences. Sha Yu took the cigarette handed over by a child and put it on his ear. He cleared his throat and said very straightforwardly, since everyone wants to hear about my travel experiences so much, I will tell you a few paragraphs. Where should I start? Sha Yu thought for a while and then said, I got it. Let me tell you about my travel experiences in South Blue. South Blue is called the Sea of Craftsmen because there are many craftsmen who like to tinker with robots in South Blue. Of course, this has nothing to do with the story I am going to tell next. What I want to tell is a very interesting combination I met when I traveled to South Blue. Interesting combination. A child came to Sha Yu with a match, and regardless of whether Sha Yu was willing or not, he immediately lit the match to light Sha Yu's cigarette. Seeing this, Sha Yu couldn't bear to refuse the boy's kindness, and took the cigarette from his ear and lit it. Yes, a very interesting combination. Sha Yu took a puff of cigarette and said, the leader is called Tang Xuanzang. He feels bored because he has lived in South Blue for many years. He gradually came up with the idea of leaving South Blue and going to Grand Line to find the wealth left by Roger, the Pirate King. So, he found three partners to go out to sea. 
As soon as Sha Yu finished speaking, a little girl in the crowd asked curiously, what are the names of his three partners? Good question. Sha Yu showed a warm smile to the little girl. His three partners are amazing, especially the first partner who joined him, named Sun Wukong, a monkey. Ah. Hearing that Tang Xuanzang's first partner was actually a monkey, the children around Sha Yu made surprised sounds. Why would he take a monkey out to sea? I heard from the adults in the village that the Grand Line is very dangerous, and there are many pirates who kill without blinking an eye. What do you know? This monkey must be more powerful than those pirates. Yes. Sha Yu gave a thumbs up to the little boy who was talking. This monkey is indeed very powerful. No one in the Grand Line can beat it. Wow. What about his second partner? His second partner is Zhu Baji. You should know what Zhu Baji is by hearing this name. Yes, this guy is a black wild boar. Why did Tang Xuanzang look for a black wild boar as a partner? Isn't he afraid of being knocked away by the black wild boar? Stupid, doesn't Tang Xuanzang have a very powerful monkey by his side? That's right. Then, Mr. Sha Yu, what is his third partner? His third partner is called Sha Wujing. He is neither a monkey nor a black wild boar, but an admiral in the palace. Sha Yu was so excited when he told the story that the children and teenagers around him and the villagers of Shimotsuki village were soon drawn into the story he made up. They were so excited that they wanted to stretch their necks. Because Sha Yu told the story very vividly, and with the strange combination led by Tang Xuanzang, more and more villagers began to rush here. Soon, a boy with green onion hair squeezed into the crowd. Zoro, why did you come just now? As soon as the green-haired boy squeezed into the crowd, a boy of the same age quickly pulled him to his side and said excitedly, aren't you going out to sea to find the world's number one swordsman Dracul Mahak? Maybe Mr. Sha Yu has seen him. Hearing this, the green-haired boy's eyes instantly became fanatical. At this moment, the two children who came to Sha Yu suddenly made a regretful sound. Mr. Sha Yu, didn't Tang Xuanzang and the others enter the new world? If they work harder, they should be able to reach Raftal. Why don't you want to go on and return to South Blue? Because Tang Xuanzang's first partner Wukong is tired of fighting and doesn't want to continue. Sha Yu raised his hand and touched the head of the little boy who came to him, and whispered, Many times, the world is not about fighting, but about human relationships, kid. Oh. The little boy blinked and asked curiously, Did Wukong return to South Blue? Everyone has returned. Sha Yu nodded, after they returned to South Blue, Sha Wujing returned to the palace to continue to be a curtain raiser. Admiral, Zhu Baji went to a place called Gao Laozhuang, where he lived a life of debauchery every day, which made Wukong very envious. Quote. So, Wukong changed his name to Jia Baoyu and became Bao Eri of Ronguo Mansion, and the gears of fate began to turn. Hearing that Sun Wukong actually changed his name to Jia Baoyu and became Bao Eri, a group of children opened their eyes wide, their faces full of disbelief. What happened next? What happened next? Why did he become Jia Baoyu? Quote. The next is another story. Sha Yu smiled slightly. We will talk about it tomorrow. It's getting late. The children should go home to find their mother. Quote. Mr. Sha Yu, please stay at my house tonight. As the villagers gradually dispersed, the man who brought Sha Yu to his home immediately arranged for his wife to vacate a room. The man's name is Oggs, a real farmer. His ancestors have lived in Shimotsuki village for generations, and the farthest place he has been to is the coast of Shimotsuki village. The reason is very simple. After the execution of Roger, the once popular pirate king in Logue town, the pirate problem not only did not decrease, but became more and more serious, making many villagers on the island dare not go out to sea rashly. Even so, there will be pirates coming to the island every now and then to rob. Compared to the villages and towns on other islands, Shimotsuki village is one of the safest villages in East Blue. First, there is a dojo in Shimotsuki village that teaches villagers to practice swordsmanship to strengthen themselves, and then there is a group of mysterious people who appear in the dojo every now and then to talk with the owner of the dojo, Koshiro, by candlelight. Trouble. Sha Yu nodded slightly towards Ogus, but his eyes never left the green-haired boy who stood in front of Ogus's house. He had noticed the green-haired boy as early as when he appeared. As a great traverser and traveler in the pirate world, he certainly knew that this green-haired boy was Zoro, one of the combat members of the future protagonist group. 
According to the current timeline, Zoro is 17 or 18 years old at this time, and most likely he should be 18 years old. Seeing Sha Yu looking at him, the green-haired boy stopped being silent and walked quickly to Sha Yu, asking tentatively, Have you, seen the world's number one swordsman Dracul Mahak? Without waiting for Sha Yu to speak, August hurried over to introduce him to Sha Yu. Mr. Sha Yu, this is Rorino Azoro, the apprentice of Mr. Koshiro, the head of the East Shin Dojo in our village. He is a swordsman. Before he finished speaking, August immediately looked up. Zoro, don't be rude to Mr. Sha Yu. Where am I rude? Zoro's head was full of black lines, and he said unhappily, I just asked him if he had seen Mahak. Isn't this rude? August widened his eyes, when asking others for advice, you should add the word Mr. after their name. Zoro disagreed, he's just a traveler, he looks about the same age as me. Just as August was about to explode, Sha Yu said in time, August, it's okay. Meeting is fate, and being able to stand together and chat is friendship. You go and do your work first, I'll talk to him. Hearing this, Ogus couldn't say much more, he glared at Zoro and turned away. It's not that Ogus made a big fuss, it's really that in these years, except for those mysterious people who came and went in and out of the East Shin Dojo, there have been no guests from outside the village of Shimotsuki. Now that a knowledgeable traveler has come, Ogus and other villagers are naturally very welcome. In addition, Sha Yu has been patiently explaining various things to the children before, and occasionally mixed in some great truths such as, the world is not about fighting and killing, but about human relationships, which is definitely a good thing for children who have lived in Shimotsuki village since childhood and have no idea what the outside world is like. So, they naturally have to be polite and respectful to Sha Yu. After August turned and left, Sha Yu slightly raised his eyes and looked at Zoro who was standing in front of him. Although he had already known Zoro's growth experience through the original book, he still pretended to know nothing, and narrowed his eyes and said, You are asking about Mahak, do you want to surpass him and become the world's number one swordsman? Unexpectedly, Sha Yu actually saw through his thoughts at a glance. Zoro suddenly opened his eyes wide and said in disbelief, Do you know what I am thinking? Sha Yu did not answer directly, but said lightly, although I am a traveler who has been to many places, I have never seen Mahak. But this is not important to you, because you will always go out to sea to find him. Where is he and how strong he is? When you see him, you will naturally know. Zoro nodded, but did not leave. The look in his eyes when looking at Sha Yu gradually became fanatical. When he heard his friends in the village mentioned that Sha Yu was a traveler and more likely to have seen Mahak, his first reaction at that time was indeed to learn about Mahak through Sha Yu, and it would be best if he told him where to find Mahak. But soon his mind changed. As a traveler, Sha Yu has been to many places and must have experienced many dangerous things. Sha Yu was able to enter the Grand Line from South Blue intact, and then came to East Blue from the Grand Line, which shows that Sha Yu is very powerful. The fastest way to improve strength is not endless practice, but fighting, real fighting. You have been to so many places, you must have experienced fighting and met many strong people. After a short silence, Zoro no longer hesitated and said, how about we have a sparring match? Tomorrow I will go out to see to find Mahak. Before that, I want to see where my limit is. Sparring. Sha Yu blinked, then waved his hand and said, I am just a traveler, not a swordsman. Hearing this, Zoro's eyes flashed with disappointment. He believed that Sha Yu was not lying, because if Sha Yu was a swordsman, he would definitely wear a sword. Sha Yu not only had no sword, but also no bag, a poor traveler. Seeing Zoro's reaction, Sha Yu suddenly changed the subject and said with a smile, However, although I am not a swordsman, I am fortunate to know a great swordsman who galloped across the Grand Line 800 years ago, killed all pirates, and defeated all the strong men in the world. His name was Dugu Chubai. At that time, not many strong men in the Grand Line knew his name, because compared to his name, the strong men in the Grand Line preferred to call him, Sword Demon. The Sword Demon from 800 years ago. Dugu Chubai. Zoro's mouth twitched slightly, how do you know him? Has he lived from 800 years ago to now? Sha Yu shook his head and said seriously, during a trip, I accidentally strayed into the colorful fog and went back to 800 years ago. 
By chance, I met the sword demon Dugu Chubai who abandoned his sword and retired to the valley. The colorful fog. Zoro's eyes flashed with clear stupidity, I seem to have heard my master talk about it. But what he said is different from what you said. He said that the colorful fog is an alien space, and the time flow inside is slower than outside. Once the people inside return, they will age quickly. Your master is right, but he only said an alien space in the colorful fog. What I entered is a channel that can connect to the past. How amazing. Zoro's curiosity was aroused, and he immediately pulled a small stool to sit opposite Sha Yu, and said sincerely, can you tell me about the deeds of this sword demon Dugu Chubai? Has he, really defeated all the strong men? Of course, maybe Mahak can become the world's number one big sword man who triggers what opportunities have triggered the real biography of this sword Mo. Knight, it is a heavy sword. Although he continued to fight in hockey made a soft knife, he always stayed at the two levels of softness and hardness. With light, his look gradually became frenzy. What areas? Seeing that Zoro was completely brought into the world of sword demon, Shayu almost did not hold back and laughed. No sword is better than swords. The so-called sword-free swords, one grass and one wood, one bamboo and one stone can be used as a weapon, and the mountains and rivers are also fingers. Zoro stood up suddenly and stared at Sha Yu in disbelief. You know, although he has been practicing swordsmanship in Yixin Dojo since he was a child, he has not yet reached the point of cutting steel. And this sword demon from 800 years ago can actually split mountains and cut rivers with a blade of grass, a tree, a bamboo, and a stone. For a moment, Zoro felt that the sword art he had pursued since he was a child was simply a game for children. Nothing is impossible. Sha Yu slightly turned his head to look at a pile of firewood in the yard, and then raised his hand and waved it gently. Whoosh! A wooden stick flew out of thin air and was firmly grasped by Sha Yu in his hand. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. Take things from the air. Seeing Sha Yu grab a wooden stick in his hand from the air, Zoro, who had not yet recovered from the shock of the sword demon Dugu Chubai, suddenly opened his eyes wide. The next second, he felt a terrifying breath wave burst out from Sha Yu's body, which made him feel an urge to worship. Sha Yu grabbed the stick and chopped down a tree outside the yard without any hesitation. Swish. The ordinary stick glowed with a strange and dazzling light the moment Sha Yu chopped it down. The light flashed and passed through the night sky quietly into the trunk of the tree. Crash, before Zoro could react, the tree was cut in half and fell down. So, so strong. Looking at the neatly cut tree, Zoro widened his eyes again, almost falling out of shock. This is really a blade of grass and a tree that can be used as a weapon. But immediately, Zoro regained his composure and roared at Sha Yu in exasperation. You still say you are not a swordsman. Sha Yu flicked the wooden stick in his hand lightly, and the stick immediately turned into powder and floated in the air. Then, he clapped his hands and said with a smile. A hobby, can only be regarded as a half-swordsman. You can cut such a big tree in the air with a wooden stick, you call this a hobby. Zoro almost couldn't help spitting out a mouthful of Maoshuiwang, looking at Sha Yu as if he was looking at a monster. Ever since Kuina died unexpectedly in the supreme staircase, he turned his grief into strength, never dared to neglect it for a day, and has been practicing madly until now. But even so, let alone chopping off such a big tree with a stick in the air, even if he stood in front of the tree with his sword, he would need to strike with all his strength to chop it off. But Sha Yu is a traveler, and swordsmanship is just a hobby, which is far better than him. Is there still the law? Is there still justice? At the same time, in Shursi town, Red Rabbit and Drubby stood in a hidden corner of the 153rd branch, looking at the base court together. Although Shursi town had been shrouded in moonlight at this time, the base port was still busy. Warships kept returning with full loads, and then a group of pirates were tied up and taken down. The pirates who were affected by the killing of celestial dragons seemed very unconvinced. As soon as they were taken ashore and walked into the base square, these pirates started cursing again. One cursed louder and more dirty than the other. However, they didn't curse the marine who captured them, but the evil red rabbit. Kirilenko, they are scolding you. Hearing that all these pirates were scolding Red Rabbit, Drubby tilted his head, can you bear it? Red Rabbit didn't care, took out a canvas shoe and wiped it carefully with his back against the wall. 
Here it comes. Suddenly, Drubby's tone became a little excited, the one walking in front of the marine team is the passionate marine monka I mentioned. But we are facing a difficult problem now. From the observation just now, marine obviously knows my existence. So, it's unrealistic for me to catch you to get the reward. However, let the master come. It won't work either. The old marine who was beaten by you before knows the master. After a slight pause, Drubby suddenly drooped his ears and said a little disappointedly, why didn't you beat him to death at that time? Red Rabbit blew on the polished canvas shoes and said lightly, I didn't expect him to be so resistant. I will definitely do it next time. No words were spoken that night. The capture operation against the Red Rabbit was still going on. Little did they know that the Red Rabbit was right under their noses, calmly waiting for Drubby to come up with a foolproof plan to successfully get the 500 million bounty. Shimotsuki Village. Sha Yu got up early as usual, and after a simple wash, he practiced a set of Tai Chi in the yard of Oggs's house. The house of Oggs's house was very special, a bit like a rural courtyard, with several vegetable gardens in front of the door, and green rice fields next to the vegetable gardens. Standing in the yard, he felt like he was in an oil painting. As a farmer, OGs would not be lazy in bed. However, the first thing he did after getting up was not to go to the rice field, but to run to the big tree that Sha Yu had cut in half last night, and swung an axe to chop it. When Sha Yu finished a set of Tai Chi, OGs also chopped the fallen tree into piles of firewood. Seeing this, Sha Yu didn't want to eat and live for free, so he ran over to help move the firewood to the yard. Mr. Sha Yu's swordsmanship is very strong. After moving the last bundle of firewood to the yard, August took out a cigarette and handed it to Sha Yu. Although Sha Yu smoked, he didn't have a smoking addiction, so he declined. In the early morning, the air was so fresh and the surrounding environment was so beautiful. He didn't want to start smoking before even having breakfast. August didn't care. He took back the cigarette and lit it. Then he asked tentatively, Mr. Sha Yu, will you tell the children about your travels today? Of course, Sha Yu smiled and nodded, as long as the children like to listen, I will tell them. Great. Oggs rubbed his hands, the children will definitely like to listen. If Mr. Sha Yu can live in Shimotsuki village for a long time, I believe the children will be happier. Oggs, you have something to say. Sha Yu tilted his head and looked at Oggs, tell me, what do you want to express? As expected of Mr. Sha Yu, you guessed it all. August smiled awkwardly, in fact, it's not what I want to express, but the old village chief hopes that Mr. Sha Yu can live in Shimotsuki village for a while, because the village chief and the cadres in the village plan to build a school. Build a school. Sha Yu's eyes flashed with surprise. What kind of start is this? If his memory is correct, there seems to be no concept of school in the original book. The entire pirate world is a large illiterate world. Not to mention small villages like Shimotsuki Village and Windmill Village, even big towns like Shirzi Town and Logue Town, there is no school in the original book. In addition, Garp, as the Vice Admiral of the Naval Headquarters, has only one way to train Luffy since he was a child, which is to develop his strength. During this period, he has never let Luffy go to school. And now, the village chief of Shimotsuki Village actually proposed the concept of school. Could it be that his arrival unexpectedly awakened the consciousness of ordinary people in the pirate world? And the village chief and his people hope that he will stay, most likely hoping that he will become a teacher in Shimotsuki village. This seems very interesting. He can try to spread Bolshevikism in the pirate world. No matter what the outcome is, this journey through time will not be in vain. At this time, Zoro, who saw Sha Yu's, amateur, ability to take objects from the air and chop down a tree with a wooden stick last night, walked into the yard. Zoro, what are you doing? Seeing Zoro carrying a bag, August blinked in surprise, ready to go to see. Zoro nodded, and then looked at Sha Yu, I learned a lot from the swordsmanship you talked about last night, and it also made me realize my own shortcomings. However, I still have to go to see. Because I once made a promise to someone, I want to take her share to become the strongest, and let my name resound through the heavens. Before he finished speaking, Zoro's eyes suddenly became fanatical, can you, promise me one thing? Oh. Sha Yu blinked and smiled, tell me. I know you are very strong. Zoro took a step forward, 
staring at Sha Yu with burning eyes, when I defeat Mahak and become the world's number one swordsman in the future, can you fight with me? I want to challenge the sword demon Dugu Chubai's swordless victory with sword. Hearing this, Sha Yu couldn't help laughing a little, according to your challenge, does it mean that I am stronger than Mahak in your eyes? Zoro did not answer directly, my intuition tells me that you, are very strong. No problem. Sha Yu shrugged slightly, when you defeat Mahak and become the new world's number one swordsman, I will spar with you. Hey, I didn't expect Sha Yu to agree so readily. Zoro smiled, don't worry, I won't let you wait too long, Mr. Sha Yu. After that, Zoro stopped talking nonsense and simply turned around and left. Of course, Zoro didn't just think that Sha Yu was very strong. Last night, after he saw Sha Yu's method of cutting off a tree in the air and returned to the East Shin Dojo, he couldn't wait to consult his master Koshiro. Through the answer of his master Koshiro, he roughly understood that there were many former grand lines with such strength, but they all needed the help of Haki. And there were only a handful of strong people who could use Haki to cut out a slashing wave with a wooden stick. It was also because of this answer from his master that he was sure that Sha Yu was definitely one of the few top strong people in the world. Zoro's departure to the sea did not cause much commotion in Shimotsuki village. Of course, the biggest reason was that the appearance of Sha Yu, the traveler, attracted the attention of the men, women, old and young in the village. Zoro was also happy and relaxed. Rowing a small boat alone, he rowed the wind and waves. But soon, Zoro discovered a serious problem, he lost his way. After drifting for two days, he unexpectedly sailed into the waters of Shirsi town. Finally, we reached the shore. Looking at the shore getting closer and closer, Zoro, who was standing on the boat and was so hungry that his back was sticking to his back, secretly breathed a sigh of relief, and then he fainted with his eyes rolled up. I don't know how long it took. Zoro was awakened by a, crunch, sound. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw a rabbit in a red plaid shirt leaning against a tree opposite him, sitting with his legs crossed very comfortably, holding a canvas shoe in his hand and wiping it very carefully. Young man, you finally woke up. Before Zoro could react, a deep voice suddenly came from beside him. Looking in the direction of the voice, Zoro's eyes widened, and his face was full of horror. Because the person who spoke was not a human, but a petite doppelganger who gave people the illusion of being experienced and calm. Don't be afraid. Seeing Zoro's reaction, Drubby tried to act kindly. My name is Drubby, I'm not a bad guy. To be precise, I'm not a bad dog. Do you see the red rabbit opposite you? His name is Kirilenko, you can't be fooled by his cute appearance. Because he has hundreds of murders on his shoulders. Not only did he kill hundreds of royal family members of a country, he also killed a world noble celestial dragons. He is now wanted by the world government. I think you and I are destined to be together, so I'll give you this great achievement. You should tie him up and send him to the marine base opposite to claim the reward. The honor belongs to you, and the reward belongs to me, how about it? Looking at the serious dupey dog who spoke human words, Zoro had more and more question marks on his head. Inexplicably, he had an illusion that he would die before he could accomplish his mission. What he saw and heard now was just an illusion before his death. Hundreds of murders. Killed hundreds of people from a country's royal family. And killed a celestial dragon. And the one who did all this was a rabbit. Do you think I'm easy to fool? No, I must be hallucinating from hunger. Thinking of this, Zoro stopped looking at Drapi and the red rabbit and raised his hand to rub his eyes. Young man, you are not hallucinating. Druby, who was standing next to him, seemed to know what he was thinking. He spoke in time and said slowly, Come on, let's cooperate and make a fortune together. Psycho. Hearing Druby's voice again, Zoro suddenly widened his eyes, pointed at the red rabbit who was wiping canvas shoes under the tree opposite and roared, You said that rabbit was responsible for hundreds of murders. What a joke. He also killed hundreds of royal members of a country. Do you think I'm stupid? Drubi nodded, you do look a little stupid, so I found you. Well, he also killed a celestial dragon. Zero resisted the urge to beat Drubi, took a deep breath secretly, and simply turned around and left. Young man, think about it. Zoro just turned around, and Drubi stood in front of him in a flash, saying seriously, if it doesn't work, we'll add two and one to make it five. 
500 million. Goodbye. Zoro didn't bother to talk nonsense with Drubby, and threw down these two words and suddenly accelerated and ran out, like a gust of wind, running a hundred meters away in a flash, and his speed was so fast that Drubby couldn't help but raise his hand and click a thumbs up. A rabbit, with a reward of 500 million baileys. After escaping from the woods at the fastest speed, Zoro glanced at the town looming in front of him, and then looked back at Drubby in the woods and the red rabbit polishing shoes under the tree, and couldn't help but complain, do you really think I'm stupid? Young man. Drubby's voice floated out of the woods in a timely manner. Hearing this crazy and slow voice, Zoro felt inexplicably terrified. Without any hesitation, he immediately let go of the speed and rushed towards the town opposite. After a while, he arrived at the market town. Looking at the pedestrians coming and going, as well as various shops and restaurants, his stomach suddenly growled. Just as he was about to find a restaurant or noodle shop to fill his stomach, a familiar voice suddenly came from across from him, young man, consider it. Following the voice, he saw Drooby standing at the door of a noodle shop across from him, holding a newspaper in both hands, and tilting his head to look at him. Seeing this, Zoro's eyes bulged instantly, you. How are you faster than me? Before he finished speaking, he was once again shrouded in inexplicable horror. The next second, he turned around and ran to another street without any hesitation. This time, his speed was twice as fast as before. In just a blink of an eye, he disappeared from this street and appeared at the entrance of another street at least a kilometer away. What's up with that doopy dog? Zoro ran to the entrance of the street in one breath and looked back with lingering fear. After confirming that Drupi didn't catch up, he secretly breathed a sigh of relief and immediately looked away. Quote exclamation mark 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 quote. As soon as he looked away, Zoro jumped up on the spot as if struck by lightning, staring at the figure that appeared in front of him with his eyes wide open in disbelief. In front of him, Drubby was even more excessive than before. Not only was he reading the newspaper seriously, he also found a small stool and sat elegantly. Before Zoro could regain his concentration, Drubby raised his eyes slightly and repeated, Young man, think about it. Think about it. Zoro widened his eyes and said unhappily, Who are you? Why do you appear in front of me every time? Because. As soon as Drubby's voice sounded, Zoro suddenly turned around and ran to another street at twice the speed before. Did I meet a ghost dog? But why did he pester me? As Zoro ran, his brain was working rapidly, and he quickly sorted out what happened in the two days since he left Shimotsuki village. From leaving the waters of Shimotsuki village to arriving at Shursi town, he miraculously did not encounter a pirate ship, and even did not encounter a passing merchant ship. You know, he was lost at sea for two whole days. It was understandable that there were no pirates in two days, but it didn't make sense that there were no merchant ships. Just then, two young men suddenly came out of a noodle shop in front of him. The red rabbit hasn't been caught yet. Haha, ha, it seems we still have a chance. A bounty of 500 million baileys, we must find the red rabbit before Marine. Don't make a fuss, Marine has sent out an admiral, four or five vice admirals of the headquarters, and all the Marine branches of East Blue have not found it. It's difficult for us two bounty hunters alone. You can't say that. The criminal is a rabbit, where do rabbits like to go most? Of course, it's the mountains and fields. Let's go, let's start looking around Shirzi town today, maybe the 500 million bounty will fall on our heads. That makes sense, let's go. Hearing the conversation between the two bounty hunters, Zoro stopped abruptly. Then, his hair stood on end. First, it was because of the conversation between the two bounty hunters just now, and second, the doppy dog appeared strangely in front of him again. You. Dot you. Unexpectedly, the doppy dog appeared in front of him again. Zoro was in a bad mood and stammered, don't come over here. While shouting, Zoro turned around and ran without hesitation. This repeated several times. Whenever he appeared in a new place, the doppy dog would follow him like a shadow as if he could predict where he would go next and wait there in advance. The terrible thing was that his legs were almost broken from running, and he was so tired that he could hardly make a sound, but the doppy dog was fine, always appearing in every place he appeared in a comfortable and elegant manner. 
Once again, Zoro, who had completely lost his sense of direction, dragged his tired body into an alley. Seeing that there was a dead end in front of him and there was no doppy dog behind him, Zoro secretly breathed a sigh of relief, and then sat down with his back against the wall. As soon as he sat down, a devilish voice came from above his head, Druby is here to welcome the bounty hunter. Puff. Hearing the voice above his head, Zoro spat out a mouthful of bloody meat, with a look of despair on his face, tired. Destroy it, quickly. After being tortured by Drubby, Zoro finally accepted this cruel reality. He was not dreaming. The duppy dog named Drubby could not only speak human language, but also had the terrifying ability to teleport. In addition, the red rabbit he saw before was really a wolf. Not only did it kill all the royal members of the Kingdom of Goa, but it also made a world noble die peacefully on the street. Shirsi Town. A ramen restaurant. Zoro ate ramen while listening to the various discussions in the noodle restaurant. There were not many customers in the noodle restaurant, but they had different professions. Two of them were marines from the base in Shirsi Town, and sitting opposite these two marines were several bounty hunters. In addition, there were some local residents. However, although they had different identities, they only talked about one topic, that is, the red rabbit that set off a huge wave in East Blue. Not only did he hear everything about the red rabbit, but he also saw the red rabbit's bounty order from a bounty hunter. The reward of 500 million baileys is simply crazy. During this period, Zoro did not participate in the conversation of the people in the noodle shop. After filling his stomach, he took a deep breath secretly, then stood up and walked out. Outside the noodle shop, Druby was holding a newspaper in his hand, standing in an inconspicuous corner and reading it very seriously. Seeing this, Zoro no longer hesitated, walked quickly to Druby, and asked in a deep voice, There are so many bounty hunters here, why did you choose me? Those bounty hunters are unreliable. Druby kept his eyes on the newspaper and said lightly, you look easier to ignore, and easier to cooperate with. Hearing this, Zoro's mouth twitched slightly, and he didn't know what to say for a while. Are you full? Druby put away the newspaper and came to Zoro, with a rare excitement in his eyes, how about 2 plus 1 equals 5? Let's go see if the red rabbit is still there. Zoro stopped wasting time and said, if he is still there. Yes, yes. Before Zoro finished speaking, Druby nodded excitedly, because we are good brothers. Well, in the words of your world, we should be called partners. You are partners. Zoro thought he had heard it wrong, and said in disbelief, he is your partner, and you sent him to claim the reward. Well, this. Druby rolled his eyes, it's really that the reward they gave is too much. Hearing this, Zoro immediately became alert. So, when the Red Rabbit killed the royal family of the Kingdom of Goa and the Celestial Dragons, you also participated. Druby waved his hand, I don't like fighting and killing. Zoro was skeptical. Druby stopped talking nonsense, raised his hand and grabbed Zoro's belt, and said simply, let's go. Ah. As soon as Druby finished speaking, Zoro felt that he was floating up. Before he could finish his shout, the town street in front of him turned into a forest. The sound of shoe polishing came from the opposite side of him. When Zoro found that he had left the town and returned to the forest where he first saw Drubby and Red Rabbit in a second, his shouting stopped abruptly, and a flash of horror flashed in his eyes. Drubby can not only move himself instantly, but also take him with him. Kirilenko, he agreed. Drubby walked leisurely to the front of Red Rabbit, and then took out a rope and a sack like a magic trick. Why did you take so long? Red Rabbit frowned slightly. Play cat and mouse with him for a while. Druby said, picking up the rope and tying up the Red Rabbit. Considering that the Red Rabbit also likes to read newspapers and never forgets to wipe his beloved canvas shoes, Druby did not tie his hands. Of course, the biggest reason is that he is worried about dirtying the Red Rabbit's canvas shoes and accidentally triggering the Red Rabbit's violent form. Kirilenko, you have to bear with it for a while. After tying up the red rabbit, Druby picked up the sack and said carefully, before you get the bounty, you must hold back and don't run away. Just think of it as, for the master. The red rabbit nodded, and without Druby's help, he got into the sack and continued to wipe his shoes. Come on, young man. After sealing the hole in the egg, Druby looked back at Zoro, 
who was in a mess, and said, Hand Kirilenko over to Marine, fame and wealth are beckoning to you. By the way, if Marine asks, don't mention me, just say that you accidentally ran into Kirilenko who fell into the sea at sea, and caught him when he was weak, don't let it slip. Zoro didn't answer directly, but widened his eyes and said unhappily, you are obviously partners, even if you don't like fighting, you don't have to hand him over for 500 million baileys. Zoro really couldn't understand Drubby and Red Rabbit's behavior. From his perspective alone, partners should share happiness and misfortune. If it were him, even if his partner caused a big disaster, even if he was against the world, he would not betray his partner for a few hundred million baileys. Don't ask, the answer is I like money. Druby was too lazy to talk nonsense with Zoro, and went straight to the point. You carry Kirilenko to the marine base in Shirzi town and find a marine ensign named Monka. Of course, this was my original plan. You don't have to find him, as long as you can get the bounty. Hearing this, Zoro no longer thought about what tricks this dog and rabbit were going to play, and simply said, I don't want a penny of the bounty. Hand him over to the marine, and after receiving the bounty, you have to promise me that you will never appear in front of me again. Deal. Druby walked under the tree and took out the newspaper, and said lazily, Go, boy, I'll wait for your good news here. Shirchi Town. Zoro's head was buzzing as he came to the gate of Marine Base carrying a sack. When he just left Shimotsuki village and paddled on the sea, he was thinking about the world's number one swordsman and the sword demon Dugu Chubai. For this, he also made a careful plan. If he couldn't find the world's number one swordsman Mahawk in East Blue, he would find a way to enter the Grand Line. So, for the long term, he must first earn the toll to enter the Grand Line and need a larger ship. And to quickly earn the toll and buy a ship, there is only one fastest way, become a bounty hunter. The plan is perfect. The reality is also dreamy. Because at the beginning, a criminal with a bounty of 500 million fell from the sky and hit him on the head. However, he didn't want a penny of this bounty. After all, the red rabbit was not caught by him. This outrageous experience made him feel a little unreal even when he was standing in front of the gate of Marine Base. Which criminal would take the initiative to deliver himself to the door for him to collect the reward? There must be a big conspiracy. Just as Zoro was hesitating whether to knock on the door, the tightly closed gate of the base suddenly opened. Then a middle-aged Marine came out angrily. Before Zoro could react, two Marine soldiers ran out of the gate in pursuit. Ensign Monka, our current mission is to catch the Red Rabbit, not to focus on the Black Cat Pirates. Besides, hasn't the Black Cat Pirates been caught by Major Hina? Why are you still angry? Monka stopped walking out of the base gate and said in a rough voice, I have followed the Black Cat Pirates for so long, but Hina came to intercept them. Do you think I am angry? Hey! Didn't Major Hina explain that she accidentally ran into the Black Cat Pirates? Before he finished speaking, the Marine soldier who was speaking suddenly turned his head and looked at Zoro who was standing not far away. Hey, what are you doing standing in front of the base gate? Hurry up and leave. Zoro ignored the Marine soldier who was speaking, and stared at Ensign Manka, who was burly and looked like a mighty man. Are you the Ensign Manka of this base? Yes, it's me. Monka looked around Zoro and asked, Bounty Hunter. Zoro nodded, and immediately took out the bounty sheet Drubby gave him, pointing to the portrait of the Red Rabbit on the bounty sheet, Excuse me, if I catch this Red Rabbit, where should I go to claim the reward? As soon as he said this, the two soldiers standing next to Monka suddenly laughed. Ha ha ha, you sound like you caught this rabbit. Little devil, go wherever it's cool. If you can catch this rabbit, I'll stand on my head to answer. Monka didn't laugh, but glanced at the sack next to Zoro, and simply said, if you catch that red rabbit, just give it to me. After I ask my superiors and confirm that you caught the red rabbit that was rewarded, I will give you the 500 million bounty without a penny less. Hearing this, Zoro secretly breathed a sigh of relief, and then quickly opened the mouth of the sack. As the bag was opened, the red rabbit in the bag immediately caught the eyes of Monka and the other two marine soldiers. Quote exclamation mark 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 quote. The moment they saw the red rabbit, the two marine soldiers almost simultaneously widened their eyes and exclaimed in unison. Red. Red rabbit. 
Before they finished speaking, one of the marine soldiers rushed to the front of the red rabbit as if he had lost his mind, raised his hand and pinched the red rabbit's face. Then, he laughed crazily, it's really the red rabbit, Monka Ensign, we are going to be rich, ha ha. Bang. The marine soldier's laughter stopped as soon as it came out. The next second, he flew backwards, like a cannonball drawing an arc in the sky, and fell heavily on the square in the base. The sudden scene made Monka and the remaining soldier wake up from a dream, and they all cast their eyes on the red rabbit standing up from the sack. Red rabbit, red rabbit. At this moment, the marine soldier who was hit by the red rabbit and flew to the base square struggled to stand up and shouted with all his strength. Red rabbit, was caught. As the marine soldier's voice sounded, Dense figures suddenly emerged in the base, rushing straight to the base gate. What? Red Rabbit was caught by a bounty hunter. Now in the 153rd branch of Shirsi town. Great, let's rush over now. We searched for almost three days and couldn't find any trace of Red Rabbit. It turned out that a bounty hunter picked it up. What a joke, this bounty hunter must have been lucky. Hurry up, target the 153rd branch of Shirsi town, full speed ahead. As the news that Red Rabbit was captured by the bounty hunter and sent to the 153rd branch of Shirsi town was passed to the warships of East Blue that were carrying out the search and capture mission, these warships immediately turned around and headed straight for Shirsi town. On one of the warships, Garp, whose internal injuries had almost recovered, stood there. He knew the strength of Red Rabbit best, so when he heard that Red Rabbit was captured by a bounty hunter, his first reaction was that the other party should not have captured the one that knocked him away. Even though Kazaru, who arrived in Shirchi town before him and saw Red Rabbit, confirmed the authenticity of the news, he was still a little unbelievable. Red Rabbit, who was so powerful that he could easily defeat him, would fall into the hands of a bounty hunter. It is said that it was a green-haired boy who had just debuted. At the marine base port in Shirchi town, warships docked one after another. Gion, Flying Squirrel, Fire Mountain, Ghost Spider, and several naval headquarters vice admirals filed down and headed straight for the base prison surrounded by a large group of marine soldiers. Then, Colonel Smoker, Major Hina and others also rushed over, all wanting to see the evil Red Rabbit who was so bold as to kill the royal family members of the Kingdom of Goa and Celestial Dragons Chalmako by himself. Shirsi Town, 153 Marine Branch Prison. Red Rabbit was tied up not only with seastone handcuffs on both hands, but also with heavy seastone shackles on both feet. Marine soldiers were guarding the prison in three layers inside and outside, which made the criminals in the next cell stunned. In the cell, Red Rabbit leaned against the wall, crossed his legs and read the magazine leisurely, turning a deaf ear to the soldiers outside the cell who were facing a great enemy, giving people a sense of relaxation that he was on vacation instead of being in prison. What is the background of this red rabbit that made Marine make such a big scene? I don't know, but it feels so powerful. Hey, red rabbit, what did you do wrong? In the next cell, a big man with a figure of more than two meters walked to the iron bars and shouted to red rabbit who was reading a newspaper. You are locked up here, and there are soldiers guarding you. You must have done something serious. Red rabbit ignored the big man and turned over a page to read with relish. How dare you ignore me? The big man's face suddenly became gloomy, and he immediately took off his shoes that he hadn't changed for half a month and threw them at Red Rabbit. Snap. The shoes hit Red Rabbit's face. Red Rabbit blinked slowly, then raised his hand to take the shoes off his face and looked at them. The big man obviously didn't realize the seriousness of the matter. He thought Red Rabbit was just like that, and continued to shout, send the shoes to me immediately. No, put them on me. As he said that, the big man raised his foot and stretched it to the cell where Red Rabbit was. Looking at the shoes in his hand, and then looking at the black and smelly feet that stretched to his cell, Red Rabbit blinked cutely. The next second, his brows frowned instantly, and then he put down the magazine and stood up, carrying endless anger and flashing in front of the big man. Without giving the big man any chance to react, Red Rabbit grabbed the big man's thigh and punched him hard. Crack. Ah. Accompanied by a shrill scream, one of the big man's legs was removed by the red rabbit. The sudden scene made the criminals in the next cell widen their eyes. The marine soldiers guarding outside the cell were also caught off guard. Looking at the bloody thigh removed by the red rabbit, they all felt a chill on their backs and swallowed their saliva wildly. 
As early as when the Red Rabbit was imprisoned here, their superiors warned again not to provoke the Red Rabbit, let alone speak ill of it. The most important thing is not to let the Red Rabbit enter a violent state. Because the royal family of the Kingdom of Goa died at the hands of the Red Rabbit in a violent state. However, although they were afraid of the Red Rabbit's strength, after seeing the big man's thigh being removed, the leading officer still plucked up the courage and said carefully, Red. Red Rabbit, you, you don't mess around. Go back to your original position and sit down. Red Rabbit turned his head to look at the officer who stopped him, and threw his thigh to the ground. Then, he bent the iron bars that separated him and the big man with one hand, and then stepped in front of the big man. Although one of his thighs was removed by the Red Rabbit, the big man did not faint, but lay on the ground and howled. Red Rabbit came to the cell where the big man was, looked at the big man rolling and howling, and frowned again. The next second, without any hesitation, he raised his fist and smashed it on the big man's head. Fists fell, blood splashed everywhere. Quiet, comfortable. Red Rabbit felt relieved after punching the big man's head. He walked to his cell without looking back, picked up a magazine and lay down, crossed his legs leisurely, and swung his feet rhythmically. The soldiers standing outside the cell saw that Red Rabbit did not continue to mess around, and they all breathed a sigh of relief. The officer standing in the front couldn't help wiping his sweat and shouted to the soldiers around him, What are you doing? Hurry up and deal with the body. At the same time, the closed prison door was suddenly pushed open. Immediately, a group of people filed in. The leader was Garp, who was beaten up by Red Rabbit and came back alive. Following Garp closely were Admiral Kazaru from the Naval Headquarters, and four Naval Headquarters Vice Admirals Mamasagi, Flying Squirrel, Ghost Spider, and Burning Mountain. Then, Colonel Smoker and Major Hina also walked in behind the four Vice Admirals. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Garp, Admiral Kazaru, and four Vice Admirals. What a divine lineup. They are not all here for that rabbit. Admiral of Headquarters Borsalino. Are you sure? Brother, you are very knowledgeable. You actually know the Admiral of Headquarters. Aren't there majestic figures and great deeds often seen in newspapers? Even the Admiral of the Headquarters was alarmed. What kind of heavenly law did this Red Rabbit break? Looking at such a luxurious marine lineup, the criminals next door who were trembling with fear because the big man was hammered to death by the Red Rabbit were simply stunned. Red Rabbit, cough, Kirilenko. Garp walked outside the cell where Red Rabbit was and coughed twice, and said seriously, you brutally killed 138 royal family members of the Kingdom of Goa, and shot the world noble Saint Charmico in the street. Your crime is unforgivable. I am ordered by the five elders, the highest authority of the world government, to take you to Logue Town and publicly execute you in Logue Town five days later. As soon as these words came out, several criminals next door turned their heads to look at Red Rabbit, their eyes showing extreme shock and worship. If it weren't for the luxurious lineup of Marine, they would have kowtowed to Red Rabbit. This is not a Red Rabbit, it's a Red God tier. Killing more than 100 royal family members of the Kingdom of Goa would be fine, but he actually shot celestial dragons in the street. A role model of the world of crime, must be worshipped. Red Rabbit was not furious because he was going to be executed. He put down the magazine in his hand and said seriously, did you give the bounty to the bounty hunter? 153 Branch Base. Monka sat in his office, and Ak could hardly suppress the arc of his mouth. He never thought that he had worked hard to catch pirates in East Blue for so many years but never got promoted, but because of a rabbit, he was promoted to the colonel of the 153 branch. Although he has not been officially appointed yet, Admiral Kazaru and Vice Admiral Garp have given him affirmation. Of course, he must thank the bounty hunter Zoro for all this. It was Zoro who gave him this credit and helped him to jump into the Dragon Gate. Opposite the desk. Zoro sat on the sofa, and he was also a little restless because of the sudden praise and worship. Especially when Admiral of Headquarters Borsalino turned into a beam of light and arrived at the base, he could feel his heart almost jumping to his throat. The reason is simple, he always felt that there was a weird atmosphere inside and out about this matter. The doppie named Drubby was obviously a partner of Kirilenko, the Red Rabbit, but he gave the Red Rabbit to Marine for 500 million baileys. The worst thing was that the Red Rabbit not only did not resist, but also hoped that he could get the bounty smoothly, and warned him not to run away with the bounty. Run away with the bounty. 
Even if he had this idea, he couldn't run away. God knows what's wrong with the Dapi. No matter where he escapes, the Dapi can always predict and appear in front of him in advance. It's outrageous. Of course, none of this matters. The important thing is that his intuition tells him that the Dapi must have other ideas for handing the red rabbit to Marine. Mr. Zoro, have some tea. At this moment, Monka spoke up and broke the silence in the office. He stood up and walked to Zoro, saying politely, don't worry, Marine and world government won't break their promise for just 500 million baileys, your bounty will be in your account soon. Zoro nodded, he only had one thought now, to get the bounty as soon as possible and give it to Doopy Dog, and then stay away from this trouble. Bang. Suddenly, the tightly closed office door was pushed open, and then a middle-aged man in a white robe walked in. Bounty Hunter, Zoro. As soon as he entered the office, the middle-aged man took out his ID and threw it into Monka's hand, then walked straight to the sofa opposite Zoro and sat down, then went straight to the point. I need to verify a few questions with you. As long as the content of your answers is consistent with what we know, you can take the bounty and leave. Without waiting for Zoro to respond, the middle-aged man continued, let me introduce myself first. I am Yui Hatano, working in the government intelligence department, mainly responsible for the murder of Saint Chalmako of Celestial Dragons. Still not giving Zoro a chance to speak, Yui Hatano suddenly changed the subject, first question, where did you catch the red rabbit Kirilenko? In the waters of Shirsi town. Zoro did not hesitate and said immediately, at that time, I was basking in the sun and blowing the wind on the boat, and the red rabbit suddenly fell off. At that time, I didn't know that this red rabbit caused such a big thing, so I didn't think much about getting him on the boat. After getting on the shore, I found that red rabbit was quite weak, exhaling more than inhaling, and he must be dying soon, so I thought of going to the town to find a veterinarian. But when I got to the town, I found out that the red rabbit I saved was actually a criminal. So, I took him to the gate of the base while he was still weak, and then I met Monka Ensign. Hitano Yufu nodded, yeah, keep talking, I'm listening. Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. Zoro had several question marks. I'm done. Yeah. Hitano Yufu nodded again, the second question, according to what we know, when you sent Red Rabbit to the gate of the base, Red Rabbit was not weak, but also punched a marine soldier away. Now that Marine Soldier is still lying in the hospital, with 25 broken ribs, he should not survive. Quote question mark quote. Zoro had another question mark on his head, aren't there only 24 ribs in the human body? The third question. Hitano Yufu avoided the second question and said with a serious expression, when you fished the red rabbit onto the boat, did you see a doppelganger? Or, did you see it before you brought the red rabbit to the base gate? Hearing this, Zoro secretly shuddered, but he still tried to remain calm and shook his head. No. According to what we know, it was the Red Rabbit who slaughtered the members of the royal family of the Kingdom of Goa and Saint Chalmako, but the reason he was able to escape from the Kingdom of Goa was all because of the doppelganger with the ability to teleport. Hearing that the doppelganger had the ability to teleport, Zoro's mouth twitched slightly. I'm afraid it's not just as simple as teleportation, sir, that dog can predict our predictions. If you are lucky enough to meet that doopy dog again, please be sure to contact us as soon as possible. Hitano Yufu pushed a suitcase in front of Zoro and said, although there is no reward for doopy dog yet, as long as you can provide useful information, the reward will be generous. Zoro nodded. Sure. Hitano Yufu finally smiled. You can go. Zoro did not leave immediately, but opened the suitcase in front of Hitano Yufu and Monka. Seeing that there were stacks of brand new baileys and some gold bars neatly placed inside, Zoro did not waste any more time, closed the suitcase, stood up and left. After watching Zoro walk out of the office, the smile on Hitano Yui's face disappeared instantly. He took out a Den Den Mushi and ordered, follow this bounty hunter and see where he will go next and who he will meet with. If you find anything suspicious, arrest him immediately. Hearing this, Monka, who was standing respectfully on the side, flashed a puzzled look in his eyes. After the other party ended the call, he asked carefully, Lord Hitano Yui, what are you doing? Hitano Yui seemed to know what Monka wanted to ask, and simply said, I just think this matter is unusual. 
Think about it, we dispatched so many warships and manpower and couldn't find the Red Rabbit. He, a bounty hunter who just debuted, just happened to find it. The most important thing is that the Red Rabbit is very strong, and his strength is not enough to capture it. Although he said that the Red Rabbit was very weak at the time, I still feel that this matter is not as simple as we see. Of course, sometimes luck is also a kind of strength. Maybe he really got lucky. As soon as Zoro walked out of Monka's office, he saw that the base square was crowded with people. Almost all the marine soldiers gathered in the square at this time, forming neat squares, all looking in the same direction. Looking in the direction of these soldiers, I saw the naval headquarters officers led by Kazaru coming out of the prison gate one after another. Kazaru and Garp walked in front. Behind them were Smoker and Hina, and between them was the Red Rabbit wearing handcuffs and shackles. Following closely behind the Red Rabbit were the four Vice Admirals, Flying Squirrel, Burning Mountain, Ghost Spider and Mamasagi. Obviously, because Garp had seen the power of the Red Rabbit, in order to prevent changes in the middle, they could only put the Red Rabbit in the middle in this way. After entering the square, the group of people did not stop, but walked straight to the port. The order they received was to transfer the Red Rabbit to Logue Town immediately and publicly execute it in Logue Town. Looking at the figure being escorted by the Marine Admiral Vice Admiral himself, Zoro, who was holding a bounty of 500 million, was also worried about changes in the middle of the journey, and hurried towards the base gate. As he walked, he suddenly stopped and looked back at the Red Rabbit who had been escorted to the port. Just at this moment, the Red Rabbit also looked back. When the eyes of the man and the rabbit met, Zoro didn't know what he was thinking at this moment, and subconsciously raised the suitcase in his hand. Seeing Zoro holding a suitcase in his hand, the originally expressionless red rabbit's eyes lit up instantly, and a cunning smile appeared on his face for the first time. Then, he stopped looking at Zoro, retracted his gaze and held the newspaper, allowing Smoker and Hina to carry him onto one of the warships. Zoro didn't stop, and walked out of the base gate with a suitcase. As soon as he walked out of the base gate, Zoro's pupils couldn't help but shrink. He then glanced at the opposite street, and saw two men in suits turning around in a hurry when his eyes swept over them. Although the two men reacted quickly, their abnormal behavior was still seen by Zoro. Zoro did not alarm the other party, carrying a suitcase and walking into the street calmly, and quickly shuttled through the crowd. Soon, Zoro left the street. In order to get rid of the two people's tracking, Zoro did not immediately go to the woods to meet Druby, but continued to stroll on the street. Unknowingly, an hour passed quietly. Although he successfully got rid of the two people who were following him, Zoro standing on a street found that he seemed to be, lost. Where is this place? Standing on the street and looking around, seeing that he could not find the direction at all, Zoro suddenly had a black line on his head. Before, he only cared about getting rid of the two people who were following him and ignored the direction. Now it's good, the people who were following him are getting rid of him, but he also lost his way. Just when Zoro didn't know which direction to go, the void in front of him suddenly shook. Then, he, who was originally on the main street of Shursi town, strangely appeared in a forest, and Druby, with his ears drooping, had already taken the suitcase over. Hi. Took the suitcase and opened it. Looking at the big box full of brand new Baileys and golden bars, Druby immediately smiled happily, and picked up two stacks of Baileys and threw them at Zoro's feet, happy cooperation. Zoro was not polite, and quickly picked up the two stacks of Baileys and put them in his bag, and asked tentatively, Druby, do you want to use the ability of teleportation to rescue the Red Rabbit? Kirilenko next. This is the conjecture that Zoro seems to have deduced during this period, because apart from this, he really can't think of why Druby would betray his partner for a bounty of 500 million, and he can't think of why the Red Rabbit appreciates Druby's betrayal. Druby closed the briefcase and said slowly, we will continue to cooperate next time. Next, next time. Zoro blinked blankly, then widened his eyes and said unhappily, you don't want to rescue Red Rabbit and then let me send him to claim the reward. You guessed half right. Druby sat on the briefcase and said seriously, if I rescue Red Rabbit, his reward shouldn't increase too much. If he makes a fuss and gets it out, the reward will definitely double. Hearing this, Zoro's facial muscles twitched wildly. Only these two dare to think of earning rewards in this way. 
They want to fleece the world government and marine by constantly brushing bounties. Do you want to cooperate long term? Seeing Zoro's reaction, Drubby simply raised a finger. As long as you are willing to cooperate long term, we will add two and one to make it 50 from next time. Goodbye. Zoro turned around and left without any hesitation. He went out to see not to be a bounty hunter, but to find Mahak, the world's number one swordsman. Most importantly, he was targeted when he just walked out of the branch base. He didn't want to be involved in the crazy plan of Drapi and Red Rabbit, and become an accomplice wanted by Marine and World Government. At the same time, on the warship leaving the 153 branch base, Red Rabbit was tied up and locked in an iron cage made by Hina using the fruit ability. When he left the base before, he had seen Zoro leaving with a suitcase, which meant that the bounty had been paid. But he didn't think of escaping prison immediately. Because Drapi's plan was to let him stay in prison for a few days, and then take action when Marine and World Government made a big publicity to attract the attention of the world. At that time, his bounty would definitely double if he successfully escaped from prison. Shimotsuki Village. In the yard in front of Ogs's house, 20 or 30 children each brought a small stool and listened to Sha Yu telling them about various travel experiences. Not only the children, but also the parents of these children and the apprentices of Ishin Dojo all gathered at this time. Even Koshiro, the curator of Ishin Dojo, came outside the yard because of the crazy popular science of the apprentices. He stood in an inconspicuous corner and smiled as he talked about interesting stories that he had never heard of. Especially when he heard Sha Yu talk about the interesting stories of some countries in the New World, even he, who was always steady, couldn't help but shook his head and laughed. Although he lived in Shimotsuki Village and was the curator of Ishin Dojo in Shimotsuki Village, he still knew some people and things in the New World. The country that Sha Yu just talked about, he was basically sure that it was a country that Sha Yu made up and did not exist. From this, it can be seen that those so-called travel experiences are probably also imagined by Sha Yu out of thin air. However, purely in terms of the story, he had to admit that it was very exciting and interesting. Mr. Koshiro. Just then, a figure walked out of the woods behind him and stood beside him, this traveler is quite interesting. His travel stories made me yearn for something. Standing next to Koshiro was a hot young woman with short purple hair and a bob with bangs. She wore a red top hat with goggles, a long tassel behind the hat, and burgundy sunglasses. She wore a red long-sleeved vest on her upper body, a red tie around her neck, a long-tailed skirt on her lower body, red boots and red and white stockings on her legs. Bello Betty, the captain of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army, the user of the encouragement fruit. I didn't expect that the one who came to Shimotsuki village this time was Bello Betty, the captain of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army. Koshiro's eyes flashed with surprise. But he immediately returned to normal, smiling and saying, the army commander appeared at this time, it should not be to collect supplies. Have you heard about the Goa kingdom? Bello Betty kept his eyes on the figure who was talking about his travels in the yard, took out a lady's cigarette and lit it, and then said, the royal family of the Goa kingdom was killed by a red rabbit, but the world government did not care about this member of the world government, which was a name only, because the rabbit that killed the members of the Goa kingdom also killed a celestial dragon. After a slight pause, Bello Betty suddenly changed the subject, Mr. Koshiro, why don't you guess what this big red rabbit is? Koshiro narrowed his eyes, shook his head and smiled, the army commander, just say it directly. In addition to preparing supplies for Mr. Dorag, I have been to I don't care about things outside Shimotsuki village. Traveler, Sha Yu. Bello Betty didn't keep the secret any longer. She stared at Sha Yu in the yard with her beautiful eyes and said in a shocking way, according to the reliable information we have, the red rabbit is the pet of this traveler. But he probably doesn't know yet that the red rabbit has been captured by Marine and escorted to Logue Town. That's right. Without waiting for Koshiro to react, Bello Betty suddenly retracted her sight and continued to throw out a heavy intelligence, the first person to catch the red rabbit was not Marine, nor the CPO sent by the world government, but a bounty hunter named Zoro. Hearing this, Koshiro turned back suddenly and looked at Bello Betty in disbelief. He did not doubt the authenticity of Bello Betty's information. After all, the other party was the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army. 
What shocked him was that Zoro had been at sea for less than three days, but he was involved in the killing of celestial dragons that shocked the world. He even captured the red rabbit that killed celestial dragons as a bounty hunter. Most importantly, he did not expect that the red rabbit that killed celestial dragons was actually the pet of the traveler opposite. What surprised him most was that the red rabbit made such a big noise outside, but the traveler seemed to have nothing happened. Every day, he either followed Oggs to experience life in the fields, or told interesting travel stories to the children and villagers in the yard. Even he was inferior to this state of mind. Just then, two figures suddenly walked past them. The one walking in front was a dupi, petite, but able to stand upright and walk fast. Following behind the dopi was a green rabbit carrying a suitcase and wearing a green plaid shirt, also walking upright. Looking at the strange combination that suddenly passed by, Koshiro blinked in surprise, while Bello Betty had a normal expression. As the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army, she had already investigated the letter related to the Red Rabbit when the news of the killing of the main clan of the Asian Kingdom and the Undragon Man Chalmers spread throughout East Blue. She not only knew that the Red Rabbit was a pet on the ship of the traveler Sha Yu, but also knew that there was a Green Rabbit and a Dapi on the same ship. Now that the Green Rabbit and the Dapi dog appeared, she would not be surprised. And she was able to obtain this information because she went to the Windmill Village before entering Shimotsuki Village. At that time, she did not think that she could get any useful information in the Windmill Village. The reason why she went to the Windmill Village was purely to see if the hometown of the leader of the Revolutionary Army was safe and if there was any danger. What she did not expect was that as soon as she entered the Windmill Village, the village chief Wu Pu pulled her home and told her that everything that happened in Wayazu country was caused by a pet red rabbit around the traveler Chong. Then, she learned about some of the traveler Sha Yu through the village chief Wu Pu, and she also knew that the reason why the village chief Wu Pu told her this was that they, as members of the Revolutionary Army, could secretly help Sha Yu and the rabbit. Because in the eyes of the village chief Wapu, the Red Rabbit made such a big fuss, and the only one who could help Sha Yu and the Red Rabbit was the Revolutionary Army of Wendy with the world government. With curiosity about the traveler Sha Yu, she immediately reported everything to the leader of their revolutionary army, Drago. So she got the latest instructions to try to win over the traveler Sha Yu. After that, she has been secretly looking for Yuan Wan's traces. Before finding Sha Yu's whereabouts, she learned from the East Army intelligence members that the Red Rabbit was captured by Zoro and handed over to Marine, so she came to Shimotsuki village without stopping. Soon, the appearance of the Dupi dog and the Green Rabbit attracted the attention of the villagers and children in the yard. Two of the children exclaimed because the Dupi dog and the Green Rabbit walked upright. The Dupi dog and the Green Rabbit did not care about the eyes of the villagers and children, and walked straight to Sha Yu. Sha Yu also saw Drubby and Green Rabbit. Seeing that many children were frightened by the sudden appearance of Drubby and Green Rabbit, he quickly said, Don't be afraid, they are my partners. Although he didn't expect Drubby to bring Green Rabbit into Shimotsuki village at this time, and even came to him in front of everyone, Sha Yu didn't think much about it, and then introduced Drubby and Green Rabbit to Hikong and the children. Hearing that Drubby and Green Rabbit were Sha Yu's partners, several children's eyes suddenly lit up. One of the children even plucked up the courage to run to Drubby and said very friendly, Hello Drubby, my name is Augsger. Without waiting for Drubby to respond, the other two children also rushed out and stood in front of Green Rabbit and greeted him enthusiastically. Green Rabbit seemed to be a little socially anxious. When the children rushed over to greet him, his eyes suddenly widened, and the expression on his face directly amused the children. Seeing Green Rabbit so cute, the other children were no longer afraid and ran over to surround the Green Rabbit. For a moment, Chenzili became lively because of the appearance of the Green Rabbit and Drubby. Compared with Drubby, the Green Rabbit was more popular with the children. In addition, Drubby had no intention of playing with the children, and soon, Drubby became quiet. In response, Drubby secretly spit out a foul breath then walked to the opposite side of Sha Yu with a suitcase, and patted the suitcase very proudly. Sha Yu glanced at the yard and saw that the children all ran to the green rabbit and chased the green rabbit all over the yard. The villagers also laughed. He quickly came to Drubby and asked in a low voice, Where is Kirilenko? Why didn't he come back with you? I handed him to Marine. 
Druby did not hide it and patted the suitcase again, earned 500 million bounty. As he said that, Druby looked up at Sha Yu with expectation, and his face was full of the words, hurry up and cross me. Quote question mark question mark question mark question mark quote. Sha Yu was full of question marks, did you exchange Kirilenko for the bounty? Druby nodded, don't worry, master, Marine doesn't know that we took the 500 million bounty, because I found a green-haired boy pretending to be a bounty hunter and asked him to go to Marine base for me. In addition, master, don't worry about Kirilenko, and don't go to save him. When the time is right, he will escape from prison. Kirilenko's bounty will definitely double by then, and then I will let the green-haired boy hand him over to Marine. Master, we are rich. Hi. Looking at Drubby who was talking about his plan to get rich, Shayu suddenly felt overwhelmed. Red Rabbit had caused such a big commotion in the kingdom of Goa that it had already affected his trip. I thought Red Rabbit and Drubby would be honest for a while, but I didn't expect that these two guys would actually use bugs to get bounties. However, it was a big headache. He still wanted to see how Red Rabbit would cooperate with Drubby. You know, as long as Red Rabbit didn't enter a violent state, his personality was still very gentle. Because according to his understanding, when Red Rabbit was imprisoned in the prison escape, a part of his body was contributed by Red Rabbit's brother. Red Rabbit's brother was gentle and calm, and was the scabbard that sealed Red Rabbit's violent personality. This also means that even if Red Rabbit has been detained by Marine now, he will not easily start a war. Unless, Marine and world government immediately execute him. Once the Red Rabbit is executed, it will definitely go berserk. Thinking of this, Sha Yu quickly regained his composure and looked at Ogus, who was standing aside and curiously looking at Drubby, and asked tentatively, Ogus, can Shimotsky village receive the latest news? The latest news. Ogus blinked, then shook his head and said, No, every time the news bird appears, it will be one or two days later than the news recorded in the newspapers, or even longer. Is that so? Sha Yu narrowed his eyes slightly, he was not worried that the Red Rabbit would be killed in the execution. After all, in Prison Break Rabbit, the jailer tried all means including beheading, poison gas, and bread bombs, but failed to kill the Red Rabbit. The reason why he wanted to receive the latest news was to know when Marine or World Government would take action against the Red Rabbit so that he could be prepared in advance in case trouble came to the door. Mr. Sha Yu, can you please talk to me for a moment? Suddenly, a voice full of aggression came out of nowhere. Following the sound, I saw the hot bellow Betty walking through the crowd playing with the green rabbit and coming straight to Sha Yu. Because she was not wearing a bra and her shirt was open, Sha Yu's eyes were immediately attracted. Similarly, August, who was standing next to him, also lit up his eyes instantly because of Bello Betty's sudden appearance, but before he had time to take in the sight of the world, he was dragged into the house by his wife's ears. Looking at the facial cleanser in front of him, Sha Yu did not look away, and his eyes gradually narrowed. Although Bello Betty did not appear many times in the original book, Sha Yu still recognized the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army at a glance. Of course, even if he recognized him, he had to show the surprise of the first meeting. Because, although Bello Betty was slim, she was really big, and her body proportions were simply amazing. Seeing Sha Yu's reaction, Bello Betty not only did not care, but moved closer to Chong Wan. Seeing the facial cleanser approaching, Sha Yu did not retreat but advanced, stopping only when he was almost touching Bello Betty. Then, with the advantage of height, he lowered his head and looked at Bello Betty who was so close, what's your name, ma'am? Bello Betty. Bello Betty raised his head, not hiding his identity, and said to Sha Yu who was close at hand, captain of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army. You. You are the Revolutionary Army. As soon as Bello Betty finished speaking, Sha Yu suddenly opened his eyes with an exaggerated expression and took several steps back. E.H. I didn't expect Sha Yu to react like this. Bello Betty blinked in surprise. Mr. Sha Yu seems to have a prejudice against the Revolutionary Army. Not really. Sha Yu waved his hand. I'm just an ordinary traveler. I don't want to have too much contact with the Revolutionary Army. After all, you are an organization that is hostile to the world government. Mr. Sha Yu, stop pretending. Bello Betty stepped forward and approached Sha Yu. She said with her red lips, 
Village Chief Wapu told me what your partner Red Rabbit did in the Kingdom of Goa. Your partner did such a big thing, but you told the children about your travel experiences as if nothing had happened. It is enough to show that you, are not afraid of world government. Okay. Sha Yu shrugged slightly, and said helplessly, Wup, this old man, actually sold me out so quickly. Mr. Sha Yu misunderstood. Bello Betty continued to move forward to Sha Yu, and smiled charmingly, Village Chief Wapu is just worried about your safety and hopes that we can help. In addition, I must admit that the travel stories you made up are very interesting and touching, especially the story about, Chivera, which moved me very much. Although I can be sure that there is absolutely no country of Gujiba in East Blue, I believe that the great leader of Gujiba, Chivera, will definitely appear. And Mr. Sha Yu can invent such a great revolutionary leader. I believe you are already disappointed with this world in your heart. In this case, why not join us to overthrow the world government, eliminate the aristocracy, and establish a harmonious, free, equal, and dream-filled new world. Looking at Bello Betty who was leaning against him, Sha Yu stopped retreating and held Bello Betty's waist. Ms. Army Captain, are you trying to get me to join the revolutionary army through a honey trap? No, you need us. Bello Betty smiled confidently, because your partner, the Red Rabbit named Kirilenko, has been taken to Logue Town by Marine and will be publicly executed in five days. With the lineup of Marine escorting the Red Rabbit, it is basically impossible for Mr. Sha Yu to rescue Kirilenko alone, but with our help, things will become very simple. After a slight pause, Bello Betty suddenly took two steps back and said seriously, in order to express our sincerity, the Revolutionary Army will help Mr. Sha Yu rescue the Red Rabbit. After that, if Mr. Sha Yu is tired and wants to stop traveling one day, the door of the Revolutionary Army is always open to you. Sha Yu did not speak, but looked at Bello Betty with interest. Just now, Bello Betty's words were very persuasive, especially when Bello Betty said, overthrow the world government, eliminate the aristocracy, and build a harmonious, free, equal, and dream-filled new world, he was inexplicably moved. Obviously, Bello Betty used her encouragement fruit ability. However, Bello Betty was a little worried because he had never thought of saving Red Rabbit. Because Red Rabbit came from the, prison break rabbit, world, prison break was Red Rabbit's specialty, and he didn't need to worry about it. Seeing Sha Yu fall silent, Bello Betty, who thought Sha Yu was moved by her encouragement fruit ability, stopped talking and squinted her beautiful eyes waiting for Sha Yu's answer. At this moment, Drubby, who was standing next to him, suddenly came forward to Sha Yu. He raised his hand and pulled Sha Yu's trouser legs, then pointed at Bello Betty, not afraid that Bello Betty would hear him, and said seriously, this woman is not a good person at first glance. Drubi's voice was not loud, but Bello Betty heard it clearly. Never expected that she would be judged as a bad person after running to the door so enthusiastically to offer warmth, and then she would be judged as a bad person. Bello Betty's beautiful eyes widened immediately. Sha Yu did not expect that Drubi would suddenly speak, and was so outspoken. While Bello Betty's beautiful eyes widened, he quickly said, Miss Betty, I think I need to talk to you. First of all, you used the power of the encouragement fruit on me without my noticing, which was very rude. Secondly, I didn't think of saving Kirilenko. Finally, I hope you don't run to rescue him on your own initiative. I won't be grateful for it, and I won't join the Revolutionary Army. Hearing this, Bello Betty's beautiful eyes widened. Sha Yu knew her power of the fruit. You know, this is her first meeting with Sha Yu. The most important thing is that when she uses the power of the encouragement fruit, the person concerned will not notice it. Unless the person is very powerful and has a strong will, he will be inspired by her fruit power, thus stimulating unprecedented potential. Even an ordinary citizen will be awakened by the encouragement fruit to awaken the power hidden in his heart. From Sha Yu's reaction, Sha Yu was not affected by her fruit power, and he also noticed when she used her fruit power. Of course, this is not important. The important thing is that she didn't expect Sha Yu to save the Red Rabbit at all. She can be sure and certain that the Red Rabbit is Sha Yu's partner, 580 because they once appeared together in Windmill Village and participated in the grilled fish banquet deeply loved by the villagers. After a brief shock, Bello Betty regained his mind and asked puzzledly, Mr. Sha Yu, isn't the Red Rabbit your partner?
can you bear to watch your partner being publicly executed by the world government? I know. Without waiting for Sha Yu to answer, Bello Betty suddenly changed the subject, you enjoyed life to the fullest in Shimotsuki village before, not because you are not afraid of the world government, but worried that the trouble caused by Red Rabbit would affect you. So you hide here and pretend nothing happened. Sha Yu raised his hand to stop Bello Betty, shook his head and smiled. Miss Betty, don't use provocation on me. I'm just an ordinary traveler, I don't have the ambitions and aspirations of your revolutionary army. You don't have to waste time on me, and don't have to run to rescue Red Rabbit to win me over. Hearing this, Bello Betty's temper was also provoked by Sha Yu, I don't believe you will ignore your partners in the world. After throwing down this sentence, Bello Betty turned around and left angrily. She didn't want to win over Sha Yu so much. The reason why she had been persuading him so hard until now was all because of their leader's order, asking her to win over this traveler as much as possible. This made her very puzzled. You know, their leader's understanding of Sha Yu is limited to the situation she reported. Of course, there is another possibility, that is, long before she entered the windmill village and learned about the deeds of the traveler Sha Yu, their leader knew about the existence of Chong through some other channels. Mr. Koshiro, let's go. After walking out of the yard of the Ogs family, Bello Betty walked straight past Koshiro who had been waiting outside. Koshiro did not speak, but followed her back to the Ishin Dojo with a smile on his face. As soon as they entered the Ishin Dojo, a face with a very fierce expression came into their eyes. Doragu. Bello Betty was stunned on the spot, looking at the middle-aged man standing in the yard, wearing a dark green coat and with a square tattoo on the left side of his face in disbelief. The middle-aged man was none other than Monkey D. Dragon, the leader of the revolutionary army who was called the most vicious criminal by the world government. Dragon nodded to Koshiro, and then looked at Bello Betty, did you see the traveler? Don't mention it. Hearing Dragon mention Sha Yu, Bello Betty was immediately furious, walked straight into the pavilion and sat down, angrily said, he didn't want to rescue the red rabbit at all. The most important thing is that he is immune to my ability and is not affected at all. Dragon and Koshiro walked into the pavilion side by side, seeing Bello Betty's reaction, and the two looked at each other tacitly. Seeing that Dragon had no reaction, Bello Betty's heart moved, and she asked curiously, have you known about the existence of this traveler for a long time? Not too early. Dragon nodded, I was near the windmill village on the night he arrived. At that time, I just wanted to see Luffy on the way but I didn't expect that the old man also arrived at the windmill village and fought with the red rabbit. Bello Betty's curiosity was completely aroused, where is Yuan Yu? Did he make a move? Dragon nodded again, it's not considered a move, but he released Conqueror's hockey to block the shock wave of the collision between the old man and the red rabbit. Bello Betty's beautiful eyes widened, Conqueror's hockey, which is possessed by only one person among millions, does this mean that he has the qualifications of a king? Dragon tilted his head to look at Bello Betty, who was full of curiosity, and shook his head to himself. In the new world where there are many strong people, it is not easy to have conquerors hockey. There are so many strong men in hockey, and the so-called king's qualifications are just the qualifications to surpass all the overlords. Whether you can become a king, it is not enough to rely on strong strength. Otherwise, Whitebeard, who is known as the strongest man in the world, would have reached the top long ago. Bello Betty blinked and asked, if that's the case, why do you still want me to try my best to win him over? Now you are not afraid to come here in person. Drag narrowed his eyes slightly, maybe it's because the story he told made me feel a little bit of the same. The story of Chavala. Bello Betty was stunned. She thought of many reasons, but she didn't expect that Dorag wanted to win over Sha Yu because of a story. Don't you think this Chavala is very similar to me? Dorig's eyes flashed with a barely perceptible fanaticism, or, Sha Yu is fabricating it based on me. The story of a great leader, Chavala. If this is true, it means that he knows me very well. Hearing this, Bello Betty was relieved and nodded. I understand, it's hard to find a confidant. The leader has found a confidant. Before he finished speaking, Bello Betty suddenly changed the subject, then. Red Rabbit, do you still want to save it? Let's wait and see. Dorag waved his hand, I believe Sha Yu will not be indifferent to this. 
The reason why he refused our help is probably because he doesn't want to be bound by the revolutionary army. Believe me, he must have planned it now and will definitely launch a rescue before the public execution. At the same time, because Drubby came back with a bounty of 500 million, and the captain of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army, Bello Betty, appeared, Shah Yu decisively said goodbye to the Og's family and returned to his ship with Drubby and Green Rabbit. As soon as he returned to the ship, Xia Yu took out a bottle of 1982 law fight given by the system from the wine cabinet and started a party with Green Rabbit and Drubby. Come on, little green, D-beast. Let's toast Kirilenko together. He sacrificed his freedom to earn a bounty of 500 million for us, so great. After filling Drubby and Green Rabbit's glasses, Xia Yu picked up the glass, to show our respect for him, we must happily spend these 500 million baileys next. I've already thought about it. I'll set off for Shirsi town tonight and find the best hotel to stay in first. Then find two female rabbits for Little Green and a beautiful wife for Drubby. Finally, clear out the shoe store in Shirsi town and wait for Kirilenko to escape from prison. Happy. Drubby raised his glass and clinked it with Sha Yu, obviously very satisfied with Sha Wan's safety. Although Green Rabbit didn't show any special happiness, he still raised his glass and drank it all. The next morning. Red Rabbit was escorted to Logue Town. Smoker and Hina were still responsible for escorting Red Rabbit. Under the protection of a group of Marines, Red Rabbit was locked in a cell prepared in advance. The room was fully equipped with various living facilities, not only with plenty of carrots, but also with canvas shoes of various styles and magazines related to canvas shoes. As soon as he was pushed into the cell, Red Rabbit's eyes lit up. Then, Drapi's plan was thrown out of his mind, and he picked up a pair of brand new canvas shoes and put them on. Then he ran to the bed, picked up a new magazine, lay down and crossed his legs, and his mood was more stable than ever before. Outside the cell, Hina saw the red rabbit's reaction, and a hint of doubt flashed across her eyes. She turned her head to look at Smoker beside her. Didn't Cindy already give a death order to execute him? Why did Mr. Garp make such an arrangement? Hina was very confused. It wasn't Mr. Garp's arrangement. Smoker shook his head, holding a cigar and speaking incoherently. It was Admiral Borsellino who heard Mr. Garp mentioned that the Red Rabbit liked canvas shoes and reading newspapers very much, so he ordered the soldiers to prepare these things that the Red Rabbit liked in advance. To prevent the Red Rabbit from going into a violent state. According to the information provided by Mr. Garp, once Red Rabbit enters a violent state, not only this prison, but even Logue Town Marine Base may be demolished by him. Speaking of this, Smoker looked around, then leaned close to Heine's ear and whispered, I heard that the violent Red Rabbit almost beat Mr. Garp to death. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Hearing that the violent Red Rabbit almost beat Garp to death, Heine's beautiful eyes widened, how is this possible? Hina is shocked. Smoker took a deep puff of cigar, and then looked at the Red Rabbit who was leisurely reading a magazine in the cell, and said to himself, I hope he will stay so quiet before the public execution. If he escapes, the thunder and wrath of the Holy Land will definitely fall on us. When Smoker and Hina walked out of the prison and came to the conference room of the Logue Town Base building, the conference room was already full of people. Garp and Borsellino sat side by side. Mamasagi, Flying Squirrel, Ghost Spider and Fire Mountain, the four vice admirals, sat respectively Garp and Borsellino were on both sides. Opposite them were four or five men in white robes, one of whom was Yui Hatano, a member of the CPD, the government intelligence agency. It looked like a meeting, but Hina and Smoker thought it was more like a trial. Because Yui Hatano and his men were so high up, Garp was obviously in a bad mood. As for Kazaru, the admiral of the headquarters, he was lazily leaning on his chair with his eyes closed, as if he had nothing to do with the matter. Before Hina and Smoker could react, Yui Hatano suddenly broke the silence, pointing directly at Garp, and said in a deep voice, Vice Admiral Garp, according to the latest information we have investigated, you seem to have concealed some useful information about the murder of Saint Charmico. Do you want us to tell you the information we have investigated, or do you want to confess it yourself? As soon as these words came out, everyone present changed color. Garp concealed the information. 
Could it be that Celestial is there any other hidden story behind the murder of dragons Charmico and the extermination of the royal family of the Kingdom of Goa? Almost at the same time, everyone present focused their attention on Garp. Vice Admiral Garp, please cooperate with our work. Hitano Yufu stood up and walked to Garp. We belong to two departments, but I am under the order of the five elders, so please understand and cooperate with Vice Admiral Garp. After all, the murder of Celestial Dragons Saint Charmico is related to the dignity and supreme status of Celestial Dragons. The five elders attach great importance to this and specially ordered me to come and investigate all the truth. Those who should be killed must be killed, and those who should be held accountable must be held accountable. Hearing this, Garp sighed secretly and nodded. I am indeed hiding something. This simple sentence made everyone present open their eyes again. Hina, who has always respected Garp very much, walked to Garp with some emotions out of control and said anxiously. Mr. Garp. Major Hina, keep quiet. Hitano Yufu interrupted Hina, then turned back to his seat and sat down, and went straight to the point. Vice Admiral Garp, what are you hiding? In addition to the doppelganger named Drubby, the Red Rabbit Kirilenko has two companions. Garp no longer concealed it. As early as when he saw the CPO members appear, he knew that what he wanted to hide could not be concealed. Because CPO is an organization directly under the World Noble Celestial Dragons. Known as the Celestial Dragon's strongest shield, the world's strongest cipher pole. Hitano Yufu was able to appear in front of him, obviously he had already investigated the cause and effect of the Goa Kingdom incident. To be precise, Kirilenko, Drubby and a green rabbit who did not participate in the Goa Kingdom incident were all pets of ten travelers named Juan. The reason why I concealed this information is because this traveler did not know what happened in the Goa Kingdom. After telling all the information he had concealed, Garp looked up and met Hitano Yufu's eyes, and then said, The reason why I dare to guarantee that Sha Yu did not participate in the Goa Kingdom incident is because before this, I talked to Marshal Sengoku and wanted to win Sha Yu to the Marine team, Marshal Sengoku also agreed with my suggestion. I want to know one thing. As an intelligence agency, the intelligence you get must be more accurate than ours. To date, have you found out that this Brigade 4.6 expert has committed any crime? Indeed, no. Hitano Yufu nodded, but his pet killed Saint Chalmaki, as the owner, cannot escape the blame. Thank you very much for Vice Admiral Garp's cooperation and confession. When you return to the headquarters, the Holy Land will issue a punishment document for you. Hitano Yufu paused slightly, and then changed the subject. What lies before us now is Kirilenko's public execution. The reason why the Holy Land ordered the public execution is to appease the emotions of the Holy Land Celestial Dragons, and to use it to lay a net. The Red Rabbit must be executed, and the Traveler Sha Yu behind him, and the Doopy Dog must also be caught. Hearing this, he closed his eyes and rested. Kazaru suddenly raised his head and said lazily, Do you have any way to deal with the teleporting doppelganger? If you are not prepared for this, I suggest that the Red Rabbit be executed as soon as possible to avoid any more trouble. The Red Rabbit is really scary. Of course. Hitano Yufu was full of strong confidence, as long as the Dapi shows up, we have a way to make him teleport first. I don't think it's that simple. Kazaru rubbed his eyebrows, still in a nonchalant tone, I found through observation that the arrested Red Rabbit is not a devil fruit ability. Because the sea stone shackles and handcuffs did not have any effect on him. So we must prepare in advance that the Dapi is not a demon fruit power. Haha, ha, Admiral Borsellino is overthinking. Hitano Yufu laughed confidently. The Red Rabbit is obviously the same as Vice Admiral Garp, majoring in physique and strength, and the Dapi's teleportation can only be a devil fruit ability. Five days passed quietly. During this time, the name of Red Rabbit, who killed Celestial Dragons Charmico and members of the royal family of Goa Kingdom, resounded in every corner of East Blue. As the news that Red Rabbit would be publicly executed in Logue Town spread, the pirates who had been caught by Marine because of Red Rabbit opened champagne to celebrate. Similarly, the unlucky pirates who were caught by Marine turned into fun people and sang and danced in prison after hearing this exciting news. Logue Town was even more lively. Various ships kept coming into the port, and everyone on the ships went straight to the Logue Town Square as soon as they landed. They all wanted to grab the best position to see the Red Rabbit. 
Among the people who kept pouring into Logue Town, there were bounty hunters who had been riding in East Blue for many years, pirates who had escaped by disguising themselves, and of course members of the Revolutionary Army's Eastern Army. Bello Betty, who led two trusted subordinates to blend in with the crowd, changed her usual hot outfit and disguised herself as a noble lady to follow the crowd to Logue Town. She was also very curious about the Red Rabbit Kirilenko, and wanted to see with her own eyes whether this Red Rabbit that could only beat their leader's father to spit blood had three heads and six arms. Of course, she also hoped to see the traveler appear before the execution, because she didn't believe that Sha Yu would abandon his companions and run away to have fun alone. As for why she thought so, it might be her intuition as a woman. In when she met Sha Yu in Shimotsuki village, her first impression of Sha Yu was that he was gentle and a little bit handsome, which was exactly in line with their aesthetic standards of feminism. In addition to Bello Betty, the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army, Zoro, a bounty hunter who became famous for catching the Red Rabbit, came to Logue Town. Although it had only been five days since he handed the Red Rabbit to Marine to take away the 500 million bounty, during these five days, he would hear legends about him wherever he went. Some legends were relatively reliable, saying that he was just lucky, and they were envious and jealous of him for picking up the 500 million bounty. In addition, the legends about him were more outrageous than the other. Some people said that he had three heads and six arms, a hideous face, and he reached the peak at his debut. He was the strongest bounty hunter in East Blue. Others said that he was Zone, who has the twelfth ability of the eagle fruit, is the natural enemy of rabbits, so he can catch the fierce red rabbit. In short, the rumors about him are getting more and more outrageous, and most of them are exaggerated and exaggerated, which makes him blush and feel ashamed. Of course, these are not the purpose of his coming to Logue Town. He came to Logue Town simply to find out whether Drapi and Red Rabbit's escape plan will change because of the public execution. At noon, the Logue Town Square where the previous pirate King Roger was executed was already crowded. Looking around, it's full of surging heads. At the top of the square, there stands a tall execution rack. Around the execution rack, hundreds of marine soldiers are armed with live ammunition, watching the surroundings as if facing a great enemy. On the high platform behind the execution rack, Admiral Kazaru is sitting in person, and the four headquarters vice admirals headed by Mamasagi are sitting on his left and right. And around the execution rack like the marine soldiers, they were also vigilantly watching the surroundings and paying close attention to the crowd's every move. During these five days, several vice admirals headed by Mamasagi learned all the information about Sha Yu, the Red Rabbit, the Dapi Dog and the Green Rabbit from Garp. They also knew that this strange combination had extraordinary abilities. Although the traveler Sha Yu had only shown conquerors hockey once, they had reason to believe that they would not be weak if they could gather animals with outrageous strengths such as the Red Rabbit, the Dapi Dog and the Green Rabbit behind them. In this way, if Sha Yu brought the Dapi Dog and the Green Rabbit to rob the execution ground, it would be a tough battle. Even though Logue Town has set up a trap, they must be very alert. After all, the Dapi Dog named Drubby has the ability to teleport. Even though the Green Rabbit, which has been unknown so far and they only know about it through Garp, seems to have the ability to repair instantly. At this moment, the Logue Town Square, which was boiling a second ago, suddenly became quiet. Then, the Red Rabbit wearing handcuffs and shackles was escorted out of an iron cage by Smoker and Hina. After a few seconds of silence, the square exploded again. E.H. What's going on? Is it this Red Rabbit? It doesn't look that scary. Ha ha ha, this Red Rabbit killed all the royal family of the Kingdom of Goa. How can I not believe it? It looks so cute. As the figure of the Red Rabbit gradually became clear in the sight of the people in the square, almost everyone felt that their cognition was overturned. In their cognition, the Red Rabbit should be tall and mighty, at least it should look super fierce. But what caught their eyes was a cute rabbit wearing a red plaid prison uniform and with a dull expression. Although the eyes were a little fierce, because of the height, they didn't feel scared at all. The most important thing is that even if he was handcuffed and shackled, even if he had walked onto the execution stand, the Red Rabbit did not forget to study, holding a magazine in his hand and reading it with relish. For a while, the public opinion in the crowd in the square suddenly changed, and many people began to question whether Marine had caught a rabbit at random to take the blame. 
Standing in the crowd, Bello Betty heard someone questioning her. She rolled her eyes and stepped forward to face Admiral Kazaru and others sitting on the execution platform and shouted, Rabbit is so cute, how could it be the murderer of celestial dragons? Did you catch the wrong one? As soon as Bello Betty finished speaking, the crowd around her raised their voices to echo. Yes, Rabbit is so cute, you must have caught the wrong one. Rabbit did not forget to study even when he was sent to the execution rack. He is so good, how could he kill someone? Rabbit is innocent. Please release Red Rabbit immediately. Red Rabbit is not the murderer. Please investigate, Marine Sama. Question mark question mark question mark question mark. The sudden shouts from the square made Kazaru and others on the execution platform full of question marks. What's going on? Is the rabbit cute? Red Rabbit is innocent. Have you seen his angry form? He was so scary that he could knock the marine hero Garp away with one punch. You call that cute? No. Suddenly, Kazaru, who was sitting in the middle, frowned slightly. At first, he didn't take it too seriously. The onlookers didn't see the process of Red Rabbit committing the crime. Some people naturally doubted Red Rabbit's harmless side. But soon he found that the reactions of the onlookers in the square were a bit extreme, and even weirdly consistent. Similarly, Mamasagi, Vice Admiral of the Headquarters, also noticed this situation. She quickly scanned the crowds of people in the square and made a judgment, someone is bewitching the crowd. It's terrible. Kazaru frowned slightly. Could it be Sha Yu? He wants to interrupt the execution ground in this way. Who knows? Mamasagi looked up at the sky and stood up immediately. Admiral Borsalino, the time is up, give the order. Kazaru did not give the order immediately, but turned his head to look at CPO Hatano Yui who was standing aside with a Den Den Mushi. Bulu Bulu. Suddenly, the phone in Hatano Yui's hand rang, report to Mr. Hatano Yui, we may have tracked down the whereabouts of the traveler Junwan. Great. Hearing the news he wanted to hear most on the phone, Hatano Yui was so excited that he almost jumped up on the spot, they are now entering Logue Town. No. A cautious voice came from the Den Den Mushi, the latest intelligence shows that a young man who claims to be a traveler appeared in a hotel in Shirsi town. Because he was accompanied by a doppelganger and a rabbit wearing a green striped suit, it was determined that he was most likely the traveler Sha Yu. After that, they cleared out all the canvas shoes in Shirsijan's shoe stores in three days. From this, they concluded that the traveler was Sha Yu and his pet Dapi and green rabbit. Enough. Hearing the Den Den Mushi chattering a lot of useless information, Hitano Yui immediately got angry, what I want to know is whether they have come to Logue Town. It seems that they haven't. The person on the other side of the Den Den Mushi was obviously scared, and his voice became weak, the latest information shows that they, their direction is not Logue Town. I heard from the waiter of the hotel where they stayed that the young traveler seemed to have mentioned to them that the next stop was to travel to Kokoja village. Travel to Kokoja village. Hitano Yufu almost couldn't help cursing. Your companions were about to be executed, and you still had the mood to travel. Where was Yi and Haoban? Did that song Doopy Dog eat them all? Okay, okay. Is this how you play? Then I'll chop this red rabbit first and then catch you. Thinking of this, Hitano Yufu was too lazy to talk nonsense with the other party. He looked up and shouted angrily at the executioners standing on both sides of the red rabbit on the rack. Execution. Chop the red rabbit for me. The sudden execution order made the boiling square quiet again. In the crowd, Zoro instinctively looked around. Although Drubby told him that the red rabbit would escape by itself, he still inexplicably hoped to see Drubby in the crowd. Similarly, when Bello Betty heard Hitano Yufu's execution order, her heartstrings tightened, and she grabbed the subordinate who had just squeezed to her side from the crowd, and asked in a low voice, what's going on? Is there no news about the traveler Sha Yu? Yes. The subordinate wiped his sweat, a cadre sent a message that they saw a traveler landing in Xiluobu village with a dope and a green rabbit. It should be Mr. Sha Yu. He really doesn't come to rescue. Hearing that Sha Yu had landed in Xiluobu village with Drubby and the Green Rabbit, Bello Betty was directly confused. The order she received was that as long as Sha Yu showed up to rescue her, she would activate the power of the encouragement fruit to influence the crowd in the square to create chaos. Otherwise, she could not wait to start the action. Indorag gave her this order because he was sure that Sha Yu would appear. 
What should I do? Red Rabbit is going to be beheaded. Bello Betty looked up at the execution rack and saw that the two executioners had raised their swords. She was inexplicably upset. If she had known that Sha Yu would not come, she would not have come. However, when she saw Red Rabbit, she inexplicably couldn't help laughing. Because even though the executioner had raised the sword, Red Rabbit, who was fixed on the execution rack, was still reading a newspaper, and even lay on the execution rack with his legs crossed and his feet swinging rhythmically. It was too late. The two executioners raised their swords without any hesitation and chopped down Red Rabbit's neck fiercely. Instantly, the huge Logue Town Square was so quiet that one could hear a pin drop. Some people stared with wide eyes, while others raised their hands to cover their eyes reflexively. Some even covered their mouths to prevent themselves from making any sound. Clang. Dang. The sword chopped Red Rabbit's neck, and then broke into pieces and fell on the rack. The Red Rabbit lying on the rack was unharmed, and the sword chopped at his neck did not affect his reading of the magazine. His feet were still swinging rhythmically. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Hitano Yufu didn't expect this result. He thought his eyes were blurry. He rubbed his eyes hard and looked at the execution rack with his pupils wide open. After confirming that the red rabbit's head was not chopped off, he took a deep breath secretly, clenched his fists, and said in a deep voice, change the bayonet. With his order, two alternate executioners immediately rushed to the execution rack with bayonets in hand and stabbed the red rabbit cleanly. Crack. As soon as the bayonet stabbed the red rabbit, it broke into several pieces. The red rabbit was still reading the magazine leisurely, completely immersed in the magazine world, turning a deaf ear to what was happening outside, as if it was not him who was being executed at this time. Seeing that the bayonet could not penetrate the red rabbit's body, Hitano Yufu was completely furious. He rushed to the rack quickly, roaring with red eyes, go to the guillotine. Soon, the guillotine was pushed to the rack and hung high above the guillotine. The sharp guillotine weighing thousands of pounds shone with a cold light in the sun, making the crowd of onlookers feel cold on their backs just by looking at 973. Although the onlookers witnessed the miracle of the red rabbit being unscathed twice, after seeing the terrible guillotine, many people secretly sweated for the red rabbit. The most nervous among them was Bello Betty at the time. If she hadn't considered that the person sitting on the execution platform was the admiral of headquarters, and she was worried that her identity as the commander of the Eastern Army of the Revolutionary Army would be exposed, she would definitely be unable to resist using the power of the encouragement fruit to create chaos. Compared to Bello Betty's nervousness, Red Rabbit still had no emotional fluctuations. He crossed his legs and held the magazine in his hands, allowing the two executioners to push him under the guillotine. Even though the guillotine weighing a thousand pounds was above his sight, he did not move his eyes away from the magazine. On the execution platform, seeing that Red Rabbit's emotions were stable from beginning to end, Mamasagi, the flying squirrel and other vice admirals all secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Before, they were still worried that the Red Rabbit would go berserk when being executed. Now it seems that their worries are a little unnecessary. Compared with their own safety, the magazine seems to be more important to the Red Rabbit. My intuition tells me that the guillotine will not work on him. At this moment, Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel, who had been silent all the time, tilted his head to look at Admiral Kazaru, who was also sitting lazily with his legs crossed. Admiral Borsellino, Sha Yu and the others have not appeared yet. Could it be that they are very confident in the strength of their partners and are sure that we can't kill this red rabbit? Who knows? Kazaru curled his lips, then raised his hand to check the time, and muttered to himself, why is it not time to get off work yet? Although Kazaru's voice was very soft, it was still heard by Mamasagi and Flying Squirrel. Unexpectedly, it was only noon, and their admiral was counting the time and waiting for the end of get-off work. The two looked at each other tacitly, and then they smiled helplessly. Going off work on time is the habit of Admiral Kazaru, one of the three admirals of the headquarters. Of course, it is not just Admiral Kazaru who has such a unique habit. Another Admiral Aokiji with the ability of frozen fruit does not go off work on time, but whenever he is on vacation, he will definitely ride a bicycle to the sea for a stroll. The most normal one is Admiral Akainu Sakazuki with the ability of lava lava fruit. 
He works overtime when Kazaru is off work, and he works overtime when Aokiji is on vacation. He is a modern model worker who is crazy about overtime. Execution, execution. At this moment, Hitano Yui's almost crazy voice came out again, kill this red rabbit for me. Amid Hitano Yui's roar, the guillotine hanging on the top of the guillotine immediately fell down with a thousand pounds of force. Clang. The sharp guillotine weighing a thousand pounds slashed heavily on the red rabbit's neck. Before anyone present could react, the heavy guillotine suddenly cracked with dense cracks. The next second, the guillotine was reduced to countless fragments and scattered on the execution rack. And the red rabbit was still intact. However, this time the red rabbit was no longer indifferent. As the guillotine broke and fell, he finally moved after being executed three times in a row. The falling guillotine fragments cut a hole in the magazine in Red Rabbit's hand. Red Rabbit, who was reading with great interest, blinked blankly at first, then looked up and leaned in front of the magazine. Seeing that the magazine was actually cut by the sharp guillotine fragments, he frowned suddenly, even though he was calm just now. The next second, he slowly put down the magazine, and his eyes swept to the executioner standing next to him. It's not good. Feeling the change in the breath of Red Rabbit, Kazaru frowned slightly, and a lazy voice came out immediately, I heard from Mr. Garp that if the things Red Rabbit likes are dirty or damaged, he will enter a state of anger. Before Kazaru finished speaking, Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel, who was sitting with Mamasagi Vice Admiral, stood up suddenly and stared at Red Rabbit on the execution rack with a tense look, everyone, get ready for battle. Crack. Before the Flying Squirrel finished speaking, a burst of breaking sound came from the execution rack. Then, the handcuffs on Red Rabbit's hands shattered. The moment the handcuffs shattered, Red Rabbit appeared in front of the two executioners. With a bang, an executioner standing in front flew out like a cannonball, and the other executioner next to him flew out of Logue Town at an astonishing speed and fell into the sea. The sudden scene not only shocked the surrounding marine soldiers, but also raised their guns to aim at the figure on the execution rack covered by angry flames. The onlookers in the Logue Town Square widened their eyes and looked at the Red Rabbit who easily broke free from the handcuffs in disbelief. After a short silence, the crowd in the square suddenly cheered. What are you all standing there for? Shoot. Hitano Yufu didn't care about the cheering crowd at this time, and shouted to the marine soldiers surrounding the execution rack, shoot. Bang, bang, bang. The harsh gunshots instantly became one, and the dense bullets instantly covered the red rabbit like a rainstorm. In just a blink of an eye, the dense bullets were embedded in the red rabbit, making it look like a robot rabbit. In the crowd in the square, Bello Betty, who saw with his own eyes that the big knife, bayonet and guillotine could not hurt the red rabbit at all, finally understood why Sha Yu didn't come to rescue. With a monster-like physique, he easily broke free Seastone does Mr. Red Rabbit, who is handcuffed and shackled, need to be rescued? Absolutely not. However, she did not stop there, but decisively released the power of the encouragement fruit and shouted loudly, Mr. Red Rabbit, charge. Take this opportunity to escape in one go. Under the influence of the power of the Bello Betty fruit, more and more onlookers joined in, shouting loudly to cheer for Red Rabbit, and some even began to approach the marine soldiers who were surrounding the execution rack and shooting at Red Rabbit. As more and more onlookers joined in, the situation gradually got out of control. However, Red Rabbit was not affected at all. In an angry state, he took a step forward after relying on his strong body to withstand the dense bullets. The next second, the bullets embedded in his body splashed away. Puff puff puff. The dense piercing sound suddenly came one after another, and a large number of marine soldiers hit by the reflected bullets fell down in an instant. Some of the onlookers who were affected by the power of the encouragement fruit and were close to the marine soldiers were not spared either. They woke up after being hit by stray bullets. After the bullets on his body were knocked away, the red rabbit rushed towards Hatano Yui without any pause. Quick, stop him. Seeing the red rabbit rushing towards Hatano Yufu, the flying squirrel vice admiral spoke first, and at the same time, he drew his sword and rushed to Hatano Yufu. It's not that the flying squirrel has a good relationship with Hatano Yufu and is worried about Hatano Yufu's life. In fact, Hatano Yufu represents the five elders and carries the orders of the celestial dragons of the Holy Land. If Hatano Yufu dies in front of them, they will definitely be blamed. 
However, he still underestimated the strength of the Red Rabbit. As soon as he rushed to Hitano Yui with a sword, the figure of the Red Rabbit instantly magnified infinitely in his pupils. The next second, a fist as big as a sandbag hit him in the face. So fast. The flying squirrel, who had no way to avoid it, widened his eyes in horror and hastily blocked it with his sword. Boom. The flying squirrel just raised his hand, and the red rabbit's fist hit him hard. Accompanied by the shocking collision sound, a circle of terrifying air waves suddenly spread out in all directions with the flying squirrel as the center, creating circles of void ripples. Then, the sword in his hand silently broke shattered. Without waiting for the flying squirrel to respond, the red rabbit's fist smashed the saber and went straight in, hitting the flying squirrel's face. Bang! With a dull sound, the flying squirrel suddenly lost its balance and was hit by the powerful fist and rotated 720 degrees on the spot. The execution rack was smashed down heavily. The visually impactful scene made the square, which was boiling a second ago, fall into silence again. In the crowd, Bello Betty and some pirates who disguised themselves in the square opened their eyes wide when they saw the flying squirrel being knocked down by the red rabbit's punch. Some of them were so exaggerated that their jaws almost dropped to the ground. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, couldn't even block Red Rabbit's punch. Red Rabbit, who knocked the flying squirrel off the execution rack with one punch, did not stop there. He rushed to Hitano Yui with unstoppable force, and grabbed Hitano Yui's head with his big hand. Just as Hitano Yui was about to be buried in the hands of Red Rabbit, a dazzling flash suddenly burst out, instantly covering Red Rabbit's ears. It's really scary, Red Rabbit. As the dazzling flash burst out, a lazy voice came out, have you ever been kicked by the speed of light? Before the voice fell, a man appeared in front of Red Rabbit. Kazaru kicked the Red Rabbit in the head. It was so fast that even a strong Red Rabbit had no time to dodge. Bang. The light speed kick carried a terrifying force and hit the Red Rabbit on the head. Without any suspense, the Red Rabbit was thrown out and smashed into ten high-rise buildings a hundred meters away. With a deafening sound, the Red Rabbit that smashed a big hole in the high-rise building was instantly submerged by the collapsed ruins. Did he get killed? On the execution platform, Ghost Spider and Fire Mountain, two vice admirals who had no time to attack, stood up together, staring at the high-rise building with a hole in their eyes. Although they all knew how perverted this Red Rabbit was through Garp, the one who took action now was Admiral Kazaru, one of the strongest fighters in the naval headquarters. Similarly, Mamasugi Vice Admiral Admiral also stared at the tall building, one hand on the hilt, ready to draw the sword at any time. Under the rack, Smoker and Hina, who had taken the Red Rabbit to the rack and retreated, were also facing a great enemy. Even though the Red Rabbit had been kicked away by Kazaru in time, they were still frightened. If Admiral Kazaru hadn't been there just now, Hitano Yui would have been a corpse now. In the dense crowd on the square, Bello Betty and Zoro also stared at the tall building with wide eyes. Just when everyone focused their attention on the tall building, a terrifying pressure suddenly burst out from the hole smashed by the Red Rabbit. Then, a figure in a completely violent state jumped out of the ruins. The Red Rabbit in a furious state had a black face, ears were standing up, eyes were shining golden, and sharp nails grew on his hands. The most exaggerated thing is that the Red Rabbit's nose disappeared, and his mouth was stretched into a jagged bloody mouth, making him look extremely hideous at this moment, like a devil from hell, with a suffocating terrifying pressure all over his body. This, is this the Red Rabbit? The Red Rabbit has transformed. So scary. Feeling the terrifying pressure coming from above, the onlookers in the square woke up as if from a dream, and many people could not bear the terrifying pressure suddenly released by the Red Rabbit and sat on the ground with limp limbs. Roar. The Red Rabbit, who was completely furious, opened his arms and roared at the execution platform. The next second, he jumped down from the tall building in a flash, rushing straight towards Kazaru with a monstrous anger. Looking at the angry Red Rabbit rushing straight towards him, he felt the unprecedented oppression brought by the Red Rabbit. As powerful as Huang Shi was, he had to take it seriously. The Red Rabbit was very fast and rushed to Kazaru in the blink of an eye. There was no gorgeous moves, and it was still a simple and violent punch. Surprisingly, Kazaru did not dodge with the speed advantage of the Flash Fruit ability, but opened his hands slightly and said word by word, 
aim Kurosakumo's sword. The moment the words sounded, the dazzling photons instantly condensed into a lightsaber and were caught by Kazaru, and then he chopped down fiercely at the red rabbit's fist with lightning speed. Shua. The dazzling light of the aim Kurosakumo sword carried a terrifying energy and drew an arc in the sky and collided with the red rabbit's fist. There was a loud, bang, and the terrifying air wave after the collision of the two immediately caused a circle of visible ripples in the void. Everywhere he went, whether it was the marine soldiers under the execution rack or the crowd watching, they all felt a strong force pressing down on them, and then a feeling of suffocation enveloped them. The ordinary audience had no suspense, and they all collapsed in unison. They slept surprisingly well and fell asleep after falling to the ground. Even Zoro, Bello Betty and some powerful people who were in disguise and mixed in the crowd were also excited by the powerful collision between the man and the rabbit. Their pupils shrank in shock. They all looked up in disbelief at the devilish figure who blocked Admiral Kazaru's aim no kume sword with just his fist. Just when everyone was shocked that the red rabbit blocked the long sword with his bare hands, an unexpected scene suddenly appeared, and Bello Betty and others who had just worshipped the red rabbit almost dropped their eyes. After the lightsaber with bright light collided with the red rabbit's fist, the lightsaber slashed down unstoppably, directly splitting the red rabbit's body in two. Ah, the red rabbit was split in half. As expected of the admiral of the headquarters, it is ridiculously strong. Similarly, Yuan did not expect the Red Rabbit to be so vulnerable. Just when Kazaru was caught off guard and showed a hint of surprise, the Red Rabbit, whose body was split by the lightsaber, raised his hands and slapped half of his head in a flash. The next second, the Red Rabbit merged into one, and the sandbag-sized fist hit Kazaru again. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. It closed again. What kind of monster is this guy? It can also close. It can't be killed, it can't be killed at all. This time, not only did the onlookers drop their jaws to the ground, but Kazaru also widened his eyes at the first time, and the expression on his face was even more wonderful. However, in the moment when he was distracted, the red rabbit's fist had already hit him. There was a loud bang, Kazaru flew backwards like a cannonball, and hit a tall building a hundred meters away. How? How is it possible? Never expected that Kazaru would be knocked away. Mamasagi, Ghost Spider and Huo Shaoshan, the three vice admirals on the execution platform, stepped forward with horror and exclaimed, Jiao to how Kazaru admiral was knocked away. It was not that the three vice admirals were making a fuss, but the scene in front of them was too horrifying. You know, Kazaru admiral is a Logia sparkling fruit ability user, and ordinary attacks can't touch his entity unless armament hockey is used. However, they are all naval headquarters vice admirals, and their strength is second only to the three admirals. Naturally, they can see the clues from the battle between Red Rabbit and Kazaru. Based on their experience, they judged that Red Rabbit did not use armament hockey. It is beyond their cognition to attack the entity of the Logia Sparkling Fruit ability user without armament hockey. After several vice admirals under the shocked gaze of Admiral, the Red Rabbit, who had punched Kazaru and sent him flying, did not stop there. He rushed to Hatano Yufu, who was about to run away, with a huge rage. The next second, his fist as big as a sandbag hit Hatano Yufu's head hard. There was a loud bang, and Hatano Yufu's mind exploded. Then, his body also exploded, and blood mist floated in the sky. After simply and roughly beating Hatano Yufu, the Red Rabbit surprisingly did not chase Kazaru, but turned around and jumped to the execution rack. Bang bang bang. Three explosions were heard in succession, and the execution rack standing high in the square suddenly turned into a pair of scrap metal. Without waiting for anyone present to react, the completely runaway Red Rabbit jumped directly to the execution rack. Kazaru fell down below the high-rise building. The next second, Shin. Boom. 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 Accompanied by the rhythmic roar, the 18-story high-rise building turned into a large bungalow in the blink of an eye. Seeing the 18-story building turned into a bungalow in an instant, not only the onlookers in the square were dumbfounded, but also Mamasagi and other vice admirals on the execution platform were in a mess. This, this is too much. Mamasagi stood on the execution platform, letting her vice-admiral coat fly wildly by the air wave, 
with her mouth slightly open, staring at the completely violent red rabbit in disbelief, with her eyes wide open, and the expression on her face was simply too wonderful. Ghost Spider and Fire Mountain, the two vice admirals of the headquarters, swallowed their saliva wildly, secretly glad that they were not fighting with Red Rabbit at this time. The horror that could knock Admiral Kazaru away with one punch, and now turned the moving building into a bungalow with one punch, floor by floor, was obviously not something they could contend with. If the Red Rabbit's sandbag-sized fist hits them, it would be better to hit one of them flying freely. Kazaru, who was originally on the 18th floor, was faced with the Red Rabbit again because all the floors below were knocked away by the Red Rabbit. Looking at the Red Rabbit with only golden eyes and a ferocious bloody mouth, Kazaru, who was hit hard and spit out a mouthful of bloody meat, stood up from the ruins slowly, it's really scary. If you continue to be furious, this lobe town may be demolished by you. Roar. The Red Rabbit didn't say anything nonsense, and roared at Kazaru, and then jumped up 197, still punching Kazaru with a simple and rough punch. Faced with the angry punch that could hit his body, Kazaru, who suffered a loss, didn't dare to face it head on. At the moment the fist hit him, he immediately turned into 10 streams of light and flew a step. Bang! Kazaru just floated to the side, and a fist as big as a sandbag followed him like a shadow, hitting him hard in the stomach. How is it possible? Even Kazaru opened his eyes in disbelief when the fist hit him, and his eyes were wide open because of the power of the punch, giving people the illusion that his eyeballs would fall out in the next second. This time Kazaru was completely shocked. Because he never thought that the Red Rabbit could keep up with his speed. You know, he is a sparkling fruit ability user, and his speed is comparable to the speed of light. And at such a speed, the Red Rabbit not only caught up, but also hit him in the stomach with a precise punch before he could react. Wow. As soon as the voice fell, Kazaru opened his mouth and spit out a mouthful of blood, and then flew straight back again and fell a hundred meters away. It's not keeping up with my speed. Kazaru, who fell a hundred meters away, didn't care about the blood surging in his body. He immediately floated to the sky, staring at the red rabbit on the ground with a look of horror, and said in a lost voice, it's predicting my direction of movement. This is troublesome. Kazaru's face became solemn for the first time after discovering that the Red Rabbit could predict his movement trajectory and direction. After the fight just now, he was basically sure that the Red Rabbit not only had a violent fist far better than Garp, but also had a predictive ability that Pooh had never had. After comprehensive analysis, he came to a terrible conclusion. The strength of the Red Rabbit was far above Garp. What made him feel most incredible was the Red Rabbit's body recovery ability. You know, he just split the Red Rabbit's body with a sword. But the Red Rabbit just clapped his hands and merged them into one, as if he had split only a clone of the Red Rabbit. Such an amazing healing ability and strange body structure were unheard of by him. This also means that the Red Rabbit in the furious form has an immortal body. Well, it's almost time to get off work. I can't keep fighting with the Red Rabbit. Thinking of this, Kazaru turned into a stream of light and returned to the ground. As he guessed, as soon as he landed on the ground, the Red Rabbit predicted his position and immediately pounced on him with its fangs and claws bared. So scary. Faced with the Red Rabbit rushing over, Kazaru did not dodge or evade, but calmly took out a magazine from his arms and protected himself. Almost instantly, the fist that had hit his chest stopped abruptly. Then, the Red Rabbit seemed to be under a spell, staring at the magazine in Kazaru's hand. Unexpectedly, this trick really worked, and Kazaru almost laughed like a pig. As early as when he learned from Garp that the Red Rabbit liked canvas shoes, magazines, newspapers and carrots, he made preparations in advance to prevent any accidents. However, due to his identity as an admiral, he still held back his laughter, but maintained his proper posture and slowly took out another carrot. The moment the carrot appeared, the violent aura on the red rabbit disappeared visibly, and it returned to its normal form in an instant. Then, he snatched the carrot from Kazaru's hand and started eating it. After eating a carrot, red rabbit's mood instantly improved. He took the magazine that Kazaru handed to the bed in front of him and sat down on the spot. This outrageous scene once again made the onlookers in the square fall into chaos. What's going on? Is it over? As expected, rabbits are rabbits, and they can't escape the control of carrots. 
but Marine should have no way to continue the execution. Although Red Rabbit has calmed down now, Marine's execution method can't break his defense at all. What else can we do? Send him to prison and eat and drink well. The most messed up one is Zoro. You know, Drubby swore to him that Red Rabbit would succeed in escaping from prison. When he first saw Red Rabbit punch Kazaru away with one punch, he believed Drubby's words. But in a blink of an eye, the style of the painting has become like this, which is outrageous. Red Rabbit, who has obviously won the upper hand, was actually captured by a magazine and a carrot. Can you believe it? Bello Betty is relatively better. Having seen the almost invincible strength of the Red Rabbit in a furious state, she now saw that it was not that the Red Rabbit suddenly changed its nature and missed the chance to escape, but that once the Red Rabbit escaped in the future, she was confident that she could use the same method to make the Red Rabbit a member of the Revolutionary Army. The most important thing is that she was sure of one thing. That is, the Red Rabbit was likely to be immortal, and the Marine would definitely not be able to kill it. Its final destination could only be to be imprisoned in the heavily guarded deep sea prison. Given the threat level of the Red Rabbit, it is very likely that it will be imprisoned on the fifth floor of the deep sea prison. Unfortunately, the army commander of the Revolutionary Army Grand Line Corps is now imprisoned on the fifth floor of the deep sea prison, and they are planning to escape. If the Red Rabbit is imprisoned on the fifth floor, they will just take it with them when they implement the prison escape plan. By then, as long as there are enough carrots and the latest magazines are arranged every day, she doesn't believe that she can't keep the Red Rabbit. Borisalino Admiral. Just then, Mamasagi Vice Admiral flashed in front of Kazaru, looking at the Red Rabbit that suddenly became quiet, wanted to laugh but didn't dare to laugh, so he could only hold back and pretend to be serious and asked, what should we do next? Will the execution, continue? Hearing this, Borsalino did not answer, but took out a Den Den Mushi from his arms, and said lazily and rhythmically, Moshi Moshi, I am Kazaru. Moshi Moshi, it's so strange. Why is no one answering? Moshi Moshi, can you hear it? Mamasagi, who was standing aside, saw Kazaru holding the Den Den Mushi and kept, Moshi Moshi, and the corners of his mouth twitched slightly, and kindly reminded, Borisalino Admiral, you are holding a wiretap Den Den Mushi. Ah, Kazaru blinked, not feeling embarrassed, and said in a lazy voice, take the Red Rabbit back to the prison first, I will ask Marshal Sengoku. Kazaru did not stop, and walked out while muttering softly, immortality is really scary. A grand public execution ended in disgrace. Red Rabbit's reputation once again resounded throughout East Blue, making many pirates who had cursed him a few days ago tremble in fear. Especially the pirates who were captured and imprisoned by Marine a few days ago, after hearing that Admiral Kazaru failed to kill Red Rabbit, they immediately began to pray that Red Rabbit would not be imprisoned in their prison. Red Rabbit would certainly not be imprisoned with these little Karami pirates. Because Red Rabbit had his own exclusive cell, which was fully equipped with carrots, magazines and canvas shoes, as well as toilets, bathrooms and Simmons mattresses. Red Rabbit, who was sent back to the cell by Smoker and Hina, seemed as if nothing had happened, and lay leisurely on the Simmons mound reading magazines. Outside the iron bars, Hina and Smoker had very complicated expressions. This was the first time they had seen a criminal treated like this since they became Marines. The worst part was that this was a super criminal who killed celestial dragons and made the royal family of a country collectively play Candy Crush. Smoker, what should we do next? After staring at the Red Rabbit for a moment, Hina habitually took out a lady's cigarette and lit it, and said with her red lips, the execution of the Red Rabbit must not be carried out anymore. There is only one way next, send him to impel down. Hearing this, Smoker shook his head and said nothing. This was no longer something he, a small colonel, could decide, because the Red Rabbit's identity was too special and his behavior was difficult to understand. When they were in the Logue Town Square before, he was sure that if the Red Rabbit wanted to escape, it would be difficult to stop it even if they all went out. But such a monster that could knock Admiral Kazaru away and recover in an instant after being split in half was actually captured by a carrot and a magazine. Of course, none of this mattered. The important thing is that if such a big terror is left in prison and there is no way to restrain it, it can only be fed and well fed. 
If the Holy Land knew about this situation, the five elders who hold the highest power would definitely spit out a pound of Maoshuiwang each, and the Celestial Dragon's family behind the murdered Charmiko would definitely not let it go. At this time, the headquarters Vice Admiral Mamasugi walked in. Hina, prepare to transfer. As soon as he walked in front of Hina, Mamasugi cast his eyes on the Red Rabbit in the cell, just now Admiral Kazaru received the latest instructions from the Holy Land immediately transfer the Red Rabbit to impel down and hand it over to Director Magellan. Hearing this, Smoker and Hina frowned at the same time. Director Magellan is a poisonous demon fruit power. The Holy Land arranged this way, obviously wanting to kill the Red Rabbit through Magellan's poisonous fruit ability. Although the Red Rabbit did commit the unforgivable crime of killing Celestial Dragons, they were somewhat difficult to accept that the Holy Land chose to execute the Red Rabbit in this way. However, they can understand why the Holy Land arranged it this way. The first public execution made Marine and World Government lose face. If they continue to use the method of public execution, they will definitely make a bigger joke. Transfer the Red Rabbit to Impel Down as soon as possible, and then use the power of the Poison Poison Fruit to deal with the Red Rabbit. It is good to kill it, but if it still cannot be killed, just keep it in prison. Remember, seeing that Smoker and Hina did not react, Mamasugi, who knew what they were thinking, did not point it out, and said lightly, don't dirty his canvas shoes, and don't tear up his magazines. Carry carrots with you at all times in case of accidents. After a slight pause, Mamasugi suddenly remembered something and continued, leave it to Smoker, Hina, go to the warship to vacate a cabin and arrange it. What is here must also be in the cabin. At the same time, in Xiluobu village, Sha Yu, who was walking on the beach with Drubby and Green Rabbit and walking towards Xiluobu village, suddenly felt uneasy. Drubi, will there be any loopholes in your plan? Sha Yu stopped and looked at Drubi, if I remember correctly, Kirilenko's execution time is today at noon. It's been three or four hours now, why hasn't he escaped back yet? Drubi didn't answer, and also stopped and looked in the direction of Logue Town. There is one thing he can be sure of, that is, no one in this world can kill Kirilenko, but he is not sure that Kirilenko will definitely escape. Because, if Marine prepared canvas shoes, magazines, newspapers and carrots as sugar-coated bullets, even if Kirilenko could not be killed, he could forget about the prison break under the attack of sugar-coated bullets. Because Kirilenko in his normal state is surprisingly stable. As long as he has magazines to read and canvas shoes to wipe, he will not care even if the sky falls. Unless, after a short silence, Drubby raised his head, like a child who did something wrong, and said with his head down, Master, if Marine uses sugar-coated bullets, Kirilenko may forget our prison break plan. Unless, one of us is wanted by a bounty or encounters danger and he knows it, otherwise he may enjoy the prison life prepared for him by Marine very much. Hearing this, Sha Yu's mouth twitched slightly, you are so screwed, Drubby. Sorry. Drubi hung his head, I'll go to Logue now town, bring Kirilenko back. Sha Yu was about to say, the system prompt that had been missing for some time suddenly rang in his mind. Don't panic, father, I'll take care of everything. It has been detected that father has lost a crew member, and the crew summoning mode is turned on. Two new crew members have been found for father, and they will arrive at the battlefield in 10 seconds. Plus, report to father, the new crew has arrived at the beach of Xiluobu village, and they are rushing towards father at the speed of a 100-meter sprint. Hearing the humble prompt sound of the system, even Sha Yu, who was already used to it, couldn't help laughing. Especially the voice of, Father Commander, it was so devilish. However, compared to the humbleness of the system, he was more looking forward to the origin of the new crew. With Kirilenko, Green Rabbit and Drubby in front, the new crew must be not simple. With a hint of curiosity and expectation, Sha Yu looked around. At the same time, on the beach a hundred meters behind him, a petite and flexible figure was approaching him at the speed of a hundred meter sprint. In the blink of an eye, the figure came to Sha Yu's feet. Without waiting for Sha Yu to react, the petite figure at his feet stood up, holding a paintbrush as long as his body. Report to the captain, Jerry is here to report. Okay. He is here to cooperate with Drubi. Looking at the little guy holding a paintbrush at his feet, Sha Yu's mouth twitched slightly. The one at his feet was Jerry from the Tom and Jerry world. 
This is, poking the animal nest, rabbit, dopey, squirrel, is it Tom Cat's turn to appear next. Just when Sha Yu had this thought, an elegant figure immediately appeared in his eyes. In front of his sight, a the fox walked gracefully, holding a cup of coffee in his hand, and walked slowly towards the beach where they were. Before Sha Yu could react, Druby, who was standing beside him, suddenly lit up his eyes, and then ran over happily, and said humbly and politely, Mr. Fox, you are here too. Welcome, welcome. Druby, long time no see. The fox lowered his head and glanced at Druby, then walked straight to Sha Yu without stopping, and bowed gracefully. Then, he took another step and walked slowly towards the boat not far away. There is one more thing next. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.